I want to welcome everybody to the July exhibit comment night. It is July the 18th, 2024. Uh, I want to welcome um, one of our newest member is Tiffany Williams. I don't know if she's got a camera or not. If you could unmute yourself, Tiffany, and say hi, that would be great. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, Tiffany's our newest member. Uh, I actually sent out six invitations to six people that asked to come tonight or to next week. And I told them they couldn't come next week because it's a special presentation, but it doesn't look like any of them came tonight. So, oh, well, I gave them a shot. Um, well, who's that? Who's that guy, Anthony? Yeah. Where's he, Tony? <laughs> well, that's Tony. Tony, Tony kind of got somehow got his, his email address got messed up on our list. And so he wasn't getting any links and he didn't let me know until last month. So now he's back. <laughs> well, I kind of recognize that face. Yeah, we got Leon in the house too. We don't see him too often. He's got he's growing a beard. He's looking like a leprechaun. <laughs> I finally got a good light. <laughs> oh, now we can see you. <laughs> yeah. I never turn my light on because you can never see me. There you go. We don't know who you are. You're incognito. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, let me get started on the, we have a lot of videos to get through and then a bunch of general uh, still images to get through too. So well, let's get let's get through the announcements and I've got two uh, videos to play before we get into the exhibit part. So I um, just want to let everybody know the assignments that are coming up um, next month is Creative Boca, uh, which would be, make sure I would recommend that you go in and read the description that Jim created in the, on the website for that. So you know what he, they're going to be looking for because it's, it's not straightforward. So read it, please. Um, September is ICM. If you, uh, have, if you want to review Stephanie's uh, talk that we had a couple of months ago on ICM, let me know if you don't have the link, I'll send you the link again. Um, in October, the, the assignment is low angle perspective. So in other words, you're going to be looking up at something. And then November is landscape panorama with at least two rows. So it's not just one row of panorama. It's going to be two rows or more. Okay. The education night's coming up. Obviously, uh, this month is going to be uh, Jackie Kramer with uh, Boca, Blur, and Brilliant Background. So she's going to talk about not only Boca, but some other backgrounds. And she's really good at this stuff. You guys, the guys that have been around for a while, we had Jackie was our very first speaker when we started on Zoom uh, four years ago, almost four years, over four years ago. So uh, we're glad to be having her back. And she's a great speaker. Um, in August, we will not be having a Zoom meeting for education night. We're going to be doing our peer and beer, which we did not do last year. And I will be setting out the details for that. It will be at, it's a Thursday night, the 22nd, I believe. And we will be meeting at the St. Pete Pier to shoot for a while. And then we'll have dinner on the pier. And hopefully we'll have thunderstorms out in the, um, out in the Gulf. We can shoot from the top of the pier. Uh, September, uh, mentioned, you know, in October, or, or excuse me, November, the subject is these double or triple rows, a landscape panorama. Robert's going to do a class on how to do that. So it shows how to shoot it and how to put it together. So that's the uh, September um, education night. In October, we'll be doing our member takeover, which we I'm going to be sending out an email uh, probably sometime this week next week about you know, who the volunteers are. This is gonna be a seven to 10 minute talk on one subject, one point, one something that that person's gonna talk about. And we'll probably have however many we can get, hopefully we can get you know, seven or eight at least to do. I have, I'll do my, the one I did for out of Chicago. Um, and then everybody else can you know, come up with other subjects. And it's really, it's actually really interesting because you get a, one image, one idea, for just a few minutes and then you move on to another idea and actually i picked up more stuff i think on that member that uh, attendee takeover than i did at a lot of the you know hour and a half long seminars from each instructor so it's actually kind of cool because you've got to it's kind of like the videos tonight you kind of have to be succinct you've got to cram a lot of information on that one subject into a short amount of time so um, be thinking about if you're interested. I had a few people that said when we talked about this a couple of months ago that would be interested in it, but I'm going to send out the email to everybody since we've got some new members involved and see if anybody's 
um, you know, who's going to be interested in it. And so we can sign up people to do is that. It, is it the expectation that the subject is something related to photography? Yeah, it needs to be something related to photography. Yeah, we're not going to talk about, you know, how to cook your your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so it needs to be photography related. No, something that you think is pertinent to, you know, uh, and, and, it, and it may not be something that you, you know, somebody may else may know about it, but it's something to you that's important that you wanted to share with us. It could be a very short tutor tutorial. It could be a very short, you know, a, a very short, you know, few minutes on, on a trip that you took something, but it needs to be, because the time is so short, it needs to be something fairly specific. Um, okay. Our next outing is on July the 27th, which is just Saturday um, at 8, or excuse me, at 10.30 a.m. And we'll be going to the Chihuly Collection, which is in downtown St. Petersburg on the main drag there. Is that Central Avenue or First Avenue? I think it's on Central. It's on Central. It's on Central, yeah. It's right across right the across street from, from the, the Morian. Morian. Yeah. Morian is on one side and the uh, Chihuly is on the other side. There is parking in the same block as the Chihuly. There's a Publix that's actually, you know, it's kind of hidden. <laughs> it's like on the second story of the cho the, the shopping or the uh, garage. And you, I think it's 18th Street. I put the information on the uh, website. So all the details for this are on the website. But our plan is to go in there, spend an hour, hour and a half. Do I mean, it's a great place for... Um, ICM, uh, you know, details so you can, you know, very derivative, deri we'll call this derivative art because you're using their, his, his art to make other art. Um, they're very open for cameras as long as you are very, very careful. It is glass and it's, you can punch it, but you, you shouldn't. So you can bring your camera, but be very careful. Um, Lee and, and Loris and I went in there a, a few weeks ago and we spent an hour and at least an hour in there just having fun taking ICMs and doing zoomies and things like that. So, um, yeah, it was, it's a good place to do stuff like that. And don't forget, you got ICMs coming up in another couple months for assignment. Does it lend itself to tripods, Lynn? I would not bring a tripod, no. Okay. So that's, if you're going to do ICMs, you don't need a tripod. Yeah, right. No, moving I mean, around, yeah. Right. Yeah, I would not know. I would I think they would not be happy with tripods. Okay. Um, so look for the details on the website. Um, I'll probably ask kind of I'll get an idea next week who's coming just so I know how many are coming. Um, it's twenty dollars regular adult. I think it's fifteen for what? seniors oh. over sixty five. Just sixty five and over. Yeah. Uh, oh, unless Is you're a Morian member. If you're a Morian member like I am, it's free. Aren't we all 65 and over? Yeah, no? there might be one or two that aren't. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, on, uh, as I mentioned before, on August the 22nd, uh, which is a Thursday night, we will be doing Pier and Beer. We generally start that at 6.30 uh, so that you can kind of plan for that um, and that for that. I'll get the details on that on the website as soon as uh, we're, we get through the next week. Um, okay. And is there any comments or questions on any of this from anybody? Uh, Robert, do you have anything to add to anything? Any any comments? I just want to thank all, all the people that have continued to make donations to this club and support of our education night. Yep. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it coming, folk. And yeah, there is a button on the website it. for that. If you uh, would like to contribute, we uh, welcome all contributions of any amount. And there's a button on the website that you can push, and it takes you right into PayPal, and you can make a you know, make a donation there. Uh, Jim, do you have, have any? A, pardon, go ahead, Richard. Are you going to have a night where you show the Chihuly pictures? Yeah, I'll do that probably in um, next month, or yeah, next month or the month following, depending on the timing. Will, will those of us who happen to be out of state and can't get to Chihuly submit pictures that we've taken previously in Chihuly? <laughs> well, you could, yeah, if you I don't want, want Robert to, just, to yell at me again. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just, just put on there from a previous trip or something like that. And I could put that on the on title page for you. Okay. You know, yeah, from a previous trip. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, Jim, do you have any comments? 
Uh, yeah, sorry. I've I've been having to keep my mic muted because it's picking up all the thunder outside my window, and <laughs> I lost power two more times in the last oh. five minutes here. So I don't know if I don't know if I blanked out on your end or not once. You but, did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Yeah, I had to recover from another power failure. So, um, but uh, yes, I know we've got uh, low angle perspective coming up. And uh, I went out uh, the beginning of this week and did some very specific low angle perspective stuff that uh, worked out well, as well as some uh, night light painting stuff that I experimented with. And if uh, anybody wants to uh, just go on an outing and uh, do some stuff like that, I'm thinking I'm looking at uh, August 7th overnight uh, going back out and uh, doing uh, doing some night light painting and uh, working with anybody that wants to do low angle perspective stuff out there uh, I'll, I'll show people what I you know what I did and uh, and help people with that technique if they want so if August anyone's 7th. interested in that uh, put it in the uh, put it in the comments and I'm going to try and uh, just schedule an overnight uh, camping outing on the uh, 7th I what went happens, out to what, what happens if you don't want to camp <laughs> then don't camp just <laughs> just come out for the day and go home <laughs> okay yep but uh, yeah I, I, I camp because i was yeah. uh i was actually i was actually out in the woods till almost midnight doing uh doing some really cool light painting stuff that i wanted to experiment with so I was out in the, out during the day doing uh, low angle perspective stuff, and then was out till about midnight in the woods doing uh, light painting in the woods. That was uh, pretty cool. Do you have also, any for Chassawiska? Um, there's no limit on that. So yeah, anybody still wants to go on that, uh, they can. Uh, if you don't have the information, I'll send you the information. And uh, I want to mention to anybody that's going on that, if anybody has, uh, I, I know Brian has now, if, if anybody has a, has a GoPro and wants to get online and have a GoPro class ahead of time, I will be more than happy to uh, to do that and help people get uh, get that set up uh, ahead of the uh, outing. That outing is because uh, there's some there's some great opportunities to uh, great opportunities to yeah. use uh, to use that there. Yeah, the outing is uh, is July. How do we let you, the How do we let you know, Jim, if we want uh, to do that? Say that again. How do we let you know that we want a GoPro class? Should we oh. text you or something? Uh, yeah, let me know. And if you guys want to do that, I can do that. Uh, I can do that one night next week for you. Okay. Well, I'll because the, 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 I know the, the outing is in two weeks, and I would uh, I'd be happy to do that uh, to do that online uh, one night next week for anybody that uh, that wants to. Yeah. If anybody Good. else is interested in that Chasawiska trip? It's the and, trip. and anybody. Yeah. And anybody, whether you're going on that outing or not, you know, yeah. if anybody has a has a GoPro and uh, and wants some uh, wants some help with that, I'll I'll do a GoPro specific class. What is the Chow Sahauki, whatever that thing is? That's the uh, summer photo outing that I'm doing in two weeks. I I've been out of I've been out of town, so I don't know anything about it. That's fine. I'll okay. I'll send you. Can you, you send me stuff, Lynn? I'm, yeah, yeah. So he can send you the information. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, anything else, anybody? Uh, I want to buy GoPro. That's the GoPro 12. Then can GoPro 12. Have? That's yeah. They're they're at their lowest price ever right now, and the uh, the GoPro 12 is great. In fact, Brian was asking me. You know, I made the comment in the one uh, in the one online thing. You know, if somebody asked me if you had one camera you would get, which would it be? And at that time, I was leaning toward the Osmo Pocket, which does do some unique things. But that was before I had the GoPro 12. Now that I have the 12. I give that one the edge. If I if I if I only had to pick one, that would be the one I would uh, I would have. It's nice to have both because they each do things the other can't do. But the GoPro goes underwater, and the Osmo doesn't. Yeah. Do so you have to get a housing for it? <laughs> no, you can just stick it right underwater. Okay. Any of the GoPros, you you can stick them underwater. You don't need the housing. I've only used my housing uh, a couple times. Most of the time, I just just you just shove it directly underwater. I just saw a GoPro 12 and a GoPro GoPro 12 Hero. What? They're, they're the same thing. Same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. People right, just guys. leave people just leave off the word Hero a lot just to abbreviate it and call it the 12. But it's the GoPro 12 Hero Black officially. 
It's four hundred and twenty-one dollars. All right, guys. Let's go ahead. We need to move along here. We're already quarter after seven, and I've got I've got uh, our our uh, monthly member feature is by Karen uh, Robinson, and then I also have the the video for the flower field outing. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to have to switch between uh, Karen's is on uh, PowerPoint, so I have to go to PowerPoint, and then I'll just switch to uh, QuickTime Player for the other one. So let me get set up for that, and let me share. Video clip. This one. Wow. That yeah. is loud. Can you see my? Uh, can you see the thing yep. from? Okay. From Madrid yes. with love. From Madrid with love. Okay, here we go. Or not? <laughs> Come on, play. Here we go. You see it in full screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And you were serenaded by Charlie. 
Uh, Karen's husband. Yay. I was, I was, I was going to ask you who played the music. I want that tape. <laughs> Karen, Sorry. can I buy it? She's got some music. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. This you the know, next this is our um, the like slideshow the from our outing um for um for the flower field. So let me play that one next. I loved your presentation. Those are beautiful photos. <laughs> I'm sorry I was camping in the rain that day. <laughs> oh, during the flowers? Yeah. Yeah, I was in Georgia. Mm. Um, I just so just so uh, so so Tiffany, our new member, just so to explain to her what we're we're about to do. This is our exhibit comment night, and the the members have sent in at least uh, only uh, up to two images. They can send either two assigned, one assigned, one general, or two general, and uh, the they're all submitted to me a week a week ago. And we, uh, uh, Robert and Jim are our two professionals. And then and this happened to be this month because it was video. I went ahead and was the third judge. But each month it's a different members uh, gets to be the the third judge, and it's all pre scored. 
Uh, the scoring is just for that individual picture. There's no competition between each other. It's basically it gives you an idea of where we feel it is in terms of aesthetics and composition and all that good stuff. And then, uh, but we, then we spend our time, we'll show each, each, each image. In this case, it'll be videos uh, to start off with. And then in general, it's it images. Then we'll talk, we'll show it, we'll talk about it. And it's like a critique, but it's not, we try to do, uh, ask you know show where improvements can can be made in the generals we may take some into photoshop or lightroom if it if it uh, it was warranted but in this case jim's probably going to do most of the talking because he's our video expert so um and then the score actually ends up towards is, is good for the end of the year award that's where it all the score comes in for the end of the year awards with a lot of other gyrations we take away a certain number and you have there's certain qualifications and all of it is in our website. So if you're interested, take a look at that and you can see uh, what all the rules are and all that stuff. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, okay. That thank all you for being explaining that. Pardon? I said, thank you so much for explaining that. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a little complicated, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, we're not a typical, a lot of the camera clubs out there do real, you know, hardcore competitions. That's not what we do. This is all about education. Um, and so what we, you know, everybody's is submitting their stuff because they want to learn. Um, you may see, you know, you're going to see a, a wide variety of videos tonight. And and it's all, you know, most of it, all of us, is basically, we've never done this before. We've done very little of it. So, um, but it's all about learning. And that's, you'll, you know, Robert, and, and anybody is welcome to comment, um, as everybody else knows, uh, as long as there's you know, not chaos. <laughs> and... Uh, we just going to have some fun having and learning about, we have some really funny good videos tonight. So we should have a good time tonight. And there's the thunder at Jim's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, uh, yeah. crossing my fingers. I don't drop out uh, during this part of okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, let's and, I'll, go ahead and, and I will, and, and uh, I will try to remember to mute my mic while the videos play. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to turn, I've got the score sheet ready up and he's going to be playing the videos tonight. Um, I'm going to, I'll let you know what uh, the title is and the photographer or the videographer in this case, and then tell you what the score is. So go ahead and take over, Jim. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, if, uh, you and Robert, uh, will indulge me, I have a, I have a couple of notes for each video that, uh, written down on my other, on my other screen here to, uh, I have no problem with mention, that. I, to mention, to mention my commentary and, uh, and then yeah. you can jump in. I, I, yeah. I kept it short to just, you know, just like two, three lines of, uh, notes per video as far as my commentary for each of the videos. Okay. And this is our first time doing this. And I got to say, I was really surprised at how well some of you guys did with this. I, uh, I laughed, I smiled, I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. I've watched every video five times and, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and gone through and, uh, and, and made, some, uh, made some notes related to them. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and start with the first one. You wanna, you gonna announce that, Lynn? Or do you want me to? Yeah, the first one is Blackpool Championships. This is Fong's and the score is 21. All right, and I'm going to jump in and uh, share my screen to get to where I'll be playing the videos. Here we go. Jack, are you starting to get weather in your area? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's starting up here too. I'm. It's, it's the storm is pretty, pretty big from the radar, yeah. Yeah. Pretty loud thundering. thunder. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is great. I have them uh, on my screen and my folder organized in alphabetical order, but the Zoom interface won't do that. So I need to, here it is. Okay, Blackpool Championship. Blackpool. Yeah. All right, my player is, is up. Do you see it on screen? Yeah, it's very, oh, yeah, yes. Delta. Okay, it looks good. All there. right. Yeah. All right, there's sound with all of these. So have your sound up, and here we go.
Okay. I'm unmuted. You have a score for that, Lynn? Yeah, it's 21. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the main issue with that it was was it was primarily a still photo slideshow. It was a minute and 35 seconds long, and it had a minute and 20 of still photos and about 15 seconds of video that didn't appear to be related to what the photos were. The other thing I'd uh, comment on that is the the titles only need to be there and not covering up what we're looking for, you know, three, four seconds, five seconds most. The, uh, the, the titles being on there for so long is also visually distracting from what we were looking at. All right, especially when they were doing this. <laughs> yes, the dancing, the, the, the dancing, dancing in motion too. title for such a long time. I say, yeah, watch some of the other videos later and you'll see, you know, the titles lasting for, you know, about three seconds or so is, uh, is great. Okay. Any comments, Robert? Um, no, I concur. I just thought that the um, the extra visual um, uh, titles and words overpowered what the actual images were were displaying or hey, watch showing. Out for those special effects, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next one is Coachman Park, July fourth, twenty twenty four. This is Brian's, and the score is twenty three point one. Okay. Can you hear me? I'm back now. Yep. Yep. Okay. Brian, I have a question. You you submitted two videos. Was that the first one you produced of the two? No, the second. This was the second one. Okay. Because I uh when we see the other one, we'll we'll see a difference. I thought the uh the other one when we get to see it was uh flows much better as a uh, storyline. In this one, things kind of jumped around with, you know, what scenes were where. Uh, I would suggest that you could reorder things. Uh, if I would say a good order would be to put the orchestra first as a lead in, then play your other clips in a day to night order. And the fireworks would be a great ending scene as opposed to having that in the middle. And uh, the other thing I suggest is you have a nice soundtrack going on, but then the soundtrack completely mutes when we get the recorded audio. And, but you'll see in some other videos we have where what you want to do is actually mix them both. You want to leave your recorded video in, but also have your soundtrack play instead of having the soundtrack just completely mute out and then come in. You can mix the two together so that you get the, uh, the ambient you know, recorded audio as well as the soundtrack. And uh, were you using an external microphone or uh, internal and camera microphone? Everything was just my Fuji camera, my Fuji mic. Okay, the internal microphone, you didn't put an external shotgun mic or anything on there for any of that audio? No. Okay, 
All right. Yeah. So uh, another thing that'll that'll help with that the the in built into the cameras microphones are like the worst. If you get any kind of a shotgun mic and put a wind muff on it, it really helps with the uh, with the external audio, especially having the wind muff on the uh, on the external microphone. So that's okay. something to think about for the future. Robert. You're muted. I thought that the jump cuts were a little uh, little distracting, and I agree with the order uh, of it, meaning that you go from one sound group to another sound group abruptly. Yeah. So there needs to be a little bit of smooth trans, uh, smoother transition between the two. Uh, the else? order was pretty much the order in which I saw the things, the way it you know it happened that night, but. Mm. I appreciate the feedback. I will. Yeah, some, sometimes the order is not really logical, and you've got to remember we're seeing very short snippets of each thing, so the logic needs, needs to make more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's no uh, when you're when you're putting together something, you know, an artistic video like that. There's no reason you have to keep it in chronological order of the way you recorded it, how you present it to the audience, and you, you'll find that in real productions you know, and documentaries, you know, all the time. Things are not put in chronological order. Things are put in an order that flows well for, you know, for what you're showing the audience. So, okay. Thank yeah, you. That, that, that's a thing to kind of, that's a thing when you're new to it to kind of get, to kind of have to wrap your head around and get over is, you know, thinking, oh, that the order it happened is the order you need to present it. And you have to, it's not a rule. And, you know, and things often flow better if you actually rearrange things Restoring when you put them together. Process, 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 process. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Next one. Next one is early morning Zen. That is my video, and the score is twenty four point six. this thing. Amelia Where was that, Lynn? No, that was, uh, go ahead. That was Boneyard Beach in Amelia Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and, what uh, I thought. Yeah, and during future videos, if you have comments or questions, if you wouldn't mind waiting until the end of the video so that we don't interrupt the, the video playing. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that uh, On that one, Lynn, some very nice things going on. Good static shots, good motion shots pan and zoom shots going on, nice smooth transitions. There was some slow motion in there and it was a good use of the wave sound effects throughout, especially for the fact when you, if, if you're recording in slow motion, you don't get the sound anyway. So that was a, that was a soundtrack laid in 
that did you do any just recording of waves there or is that a wave sound effects wave track sound, that was uh, that was used included in uh, iMovie mm -hmm. yep very well done thank you very well done was that on uh from your camera lynn or from uh, iPhone? no I, iphone that's mm -hmm. a good idea it's beautiful yeah, the nice the uh, that that zoom in past the uh, past the driftwood into the uh, into the sun was nice, and your uh, the the scene you ended on just just zooming into the water and uh, and ending on that was a uh, was good. That was using the Ken Burns effect. So. Yep. <laughs> so the that, you, don't yep. Have to, you don't have to do that while you're shooting it, guys. You can actually do that in post post okay. editing. Yep. That and it and it often looks much better done in post than you can ever do in your camera. Yeah, Lynn, I'm curious, that slow motion, was that a clip that you then melded into it? Did you shoot that separately or was that, did we, you slow that it That was probably seven or eight different clips. Okay. And, Which and you, the you slow motion together. one I shot in slow motion on my iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I like, I liked it. Mm -hmm. Robert? <laughs> I couldn't figure out with that that uh, sound whether I needed to go pee or or was ready to go to sleep. Well, that was that's why it's called early morning zen. Well, that's what I mean. So, as far as the 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 video was con concerned, it was very interesting and it, and it flowed and it kept my attention. But I swear, at the end of it, I had to go pee. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> both both are morning activities. Yes. <laughs> All that water. <laughs> Too much water. Okay. Uh, the next one is Europe Trip. This is Fong's, and the score is Okay, yeah, a little bit better than the last one. There was some video clips interspersed with it, although still overall it was uh, it was 26 seconds of video, and then the other two thirds of it again was still photos, and we've got the moving you know titles over it again. But uh, you know, like I say a little bit more video interspersed with that one, so slightly better than the uh, than the other one as far as what we're doing here. Robert. I concur. Yeah, me as well. Yeah, just too much, too much still pictures. Long. Well, we want video. We wanted video this time. <laughs> oh, I misunderstanding. Yeah, just oh, video. Last yeah. time I, I yeah. asked you, you said uh, show your picture or something. Yeah. Before I send some videos. Yeah. 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 And another thing in the international championship cannot take a video. Mm. Only can take a picture. Not allowed to video. Well, you gotta get try it. Keep trying. You got some in there, but yeah, keep doing more video, okay. and you can you know, you know, watch yeah, I, I'll we'll see you now. Let them okay. together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one is Jack's bees. This is Jack's um a, a video, and the score is twenty four point seven. 
Are we enjoying the videos, guys? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's, we got some yes. good ones coming. Yeah. <laughs> we got some good ones coming. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't fall asleep yet. <laughs> I'm looking for uh, looking for that video because uh, everything's out of order in the Zoom interface. I think the uh, I think the power failure knocked that one out of here. What? <laughs> Give me a second. Elin, why don't we skip? Oh, never mind. I found what I I I I found the 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 issue. It's. Jack actually has it named July 2024, so Jack's Bees. I renamed it to Jack's Bees, so. Yeah, okay. All right, I found it. Okay. Yeah, he, he's got it under a slightly different title. Okay. Got it. I want to tell you a little bit today about what's going on inside, and I want to show you what's going on inside. And you can see the back side of this frame with bees working this area and leaving this area empty for now. And the opposite end is also empty for now. But they will fill up. And all of these cells, all of these frames will be full of honey. And if you count them, there's 10 of them. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the empty slot, and ten. And if you look down at the bottom of this thing, you see that there are more frames down there. That's the brood box. That's where the queen is at. We're not going to disturb her down there and her brood. They're feeding their babies, making more bees. So cool. Yeah. Jack, you have a uh, real YouTuber style uh, intro happening there. That, that was uh, that was nice. Also, uh, you've got uh, you had some uh, good effects there with the uh, with the picture in picture coming in. And what we were talking about earlier with uh, Brian's video, in this case, you had the uh, the good audio ducking technique where You've got the soundtrack never goes away. It is diminished under your voice as you narrate it, but we still get the backing soundtrack and we get your voice in the narration, which is uh, really good. It's an informative, interesting story. The uh, clips were sequenced well to tell the story. And uh, I'm going to say, um, were you using an external microphone with a windscreen on it when you recorded uh, your narration, or did you lay in a voice track uh, later? No, I used a lavalier. So you had a lavalier mic that was external to the uh, yeah external to the camera. Yeah, you're muted, Jack. I'm I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. With the oh audio. yeah, you've got some big feedback going on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me let me try something just a minute. 
Okay. okay, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I had um, I, I had a lavalier uh, on the camera and a lavalier on my cell phone, and I I used audio from both of them at at different times, and then of course used this uh, music soundtrack. So I had three soundtracks going. Yeah, it was very well, uh, very well, well done with uh, with what you did with the uh, with the sound. That was well done video. Thanks, Jack. I wanted Welcome, more. I kind of wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a lot more recorded, but I only took bits and pieces to stay within the time frame. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, that's always the thing with a video. You want them to want more, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's one of the toughest things, especially when you have a time constraint in a video is to, is to, uh, you know, figure out what, uh, as they say, ends up on the cutting room floor and uh, what makes it into the final production. And you will, you will only, I mean, you're lucky if you use 10% of what you shoot when you put a production together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was just going to throw in my two cents. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and that particular video, I would have thought, I would have felt like the introduction ate up too much of the ninety seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for YouTube, yes, but for a home video, absolutely not. The home video vibes <laughs> were on point. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, was and, I, and I've seen and I've seen YouTube intros that that drag out way longer than that <laughs> yeah. sometimes you watch youtube and it's like you know okay when when are we ever going to get to the content uh you know after we see the uh the fancy little intro <laughs> robert anything no uh I'm, I'm making that comparison to youtube uh that brian uh, i don't think is fair in a sense because uh we are doing this for the first time and we're learning so I appreciate your comment. I really do. Uh, uh, but I, do, I just don't think that that's a fair comparison. What's a lavalier? The mic. The little clip-on microphone. Like, if you see, you know, a lot of people you see interviewing have a little right. mic attached to their shirt. That's a lavalier mic. Okay. Thank you. I loved it. It was pretty clear. I could hear him very well. Yep. Anything else? All right, moving on to the next one. The next one is Morning mm. Coffee. This one is Richard Richards, and the score is 25.2. Yeah. Um, and uh, here, in answer to your, uh, to your question real quick. You can get this out of the case. Um, <laughs> no, it's a tiny little thing. See that? There's, yeah. There it is right there. A little mic on a wire <laughs> but, uh, and if you put it on your thing and what is it connected to it's it has a wire. it has a little alligator clip here that right. clips it to your collar right. and then the uh the wire goes to your camera okay got it yeah i mean thank some you. of them are wired some of them are wireless thank you all right so uh the next one's richards and it's morning coffee
Oh, that was good getting that in there. What a plug for us. <laughs> cool. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a it's a good story. The story was told well. The the soundtrack was perfect. I like the uh, you know the, the dim lighting, you know, and filming it in the dim light and and the uh, the scenes, good use of the uh, of the wide mid shots and the uh, and the close up shots, and you know it was a good mix of the recorded audio with the soundtrack, and uh, nice zoom fade effect at the end, nice transitions overall. That was uh, really well done. I really enjoyed that and. Uh, I could see by your clock that uh, you're waking up and having coffee about the time I'm typically getting in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Jim. How was the zooming done at the end while you're si I can understand all the other stuff you set up mm -hmm. the camera. That, that's, uh, that's the Ken Burns effect. Yeah. That's, oh. done in, that's done in post-production. That's not done in camera. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That explains that. One thing I learned from it, though, is that if you're focusing on like my head was in focus, but when you zoom in on the on the screen with the Ken Burns effect, it shows that that was slightly out of focus. But uh, I noticed that. I don't know if you noticed it, Jim. <laughs> yeah, and that's that. The, yeah, these 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 are all things that we do and do and learn. But that was. Uh, that was a that was a great entry. I really enjoyed that one. So I have a totally stupid question. Was this set up on a on a tripod and you walked around or did somebody shoot? It was that? set up on a tripod. I moved the tripod. The camera was in different five or six different places. You guys are creative. <laughs> yeah. That hey, was the point. <laughs> I'm such a Luddite, man. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to tell you, uh, with the music and everything, I'm ready for a stogie right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and have your coffee, home. pull me one up. You're, you're listening to the same music when you wake up that I'm listening to all night long when I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on to the next one. The next one is My Thoughts. And it's Jim McWilliam, and the score is 24.6. My thoughts. This is scary. <laughs> no, this is good. It's not. It's not scary. Yeah, sit back and enjoy this one. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 this is classic Jim McWilliam. Let me That's just say. That's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Guys, there's no dead squirrels. <laughs> we probably wouldn't have had to give whose it was, and we would have guessed it. I always think of squirrels. <laughs> All right, listen, I uh, I have to go, but I will call you later, okay? Bye-bye. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was talking to my Nana. I thought for tonight's <laughs> assignment, you would take a quick tour through my mind to see where some of my ideas come from, and they come from a variety of different places. I will talk to you again at the end. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome back. The last thing I have to do is decide which image to select. Now, to do that, I use a couple of different methods. One of my favorites is to use the tried and true Magic 8 Ball. It knows all and will <laughs> tell all. Let's give it a shot. Magic 8 Ball. Am I going to get a good grade tonight? What? You piece of crap. No way. There is one other method I like to use a lot. And it is these magic cookies, which can be found in most Chinese restaurants. Not only does it have artificial intelligence, it also has artificial uh, flavoring and artificial coloring as well. And what you do is you open the cookie and there's a piece of paper inside. And let's see how we're doing here. Ah, spot on. Absolutely accurate. It says right here, I am about to eat a stale cookie. How about that? Anyway, that's it. Take lots of pictures. Have a good night. 
Crazy. We have to have at least I, one comedian. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed the the concept and the uh, you know and the the illustrations of the concept and what was uh, what was going on there. The uh, you know very humorous. I I laughed a lot and uh, uh, visually, I really liked what you did in the car wash with that uh, with the overhead roller coming at the camera where it yeah. where you did the uh, where you did like the the four the four jump cuts into the uh, into the roller there with the uh, with the nice little fade transitions that looked really nice that was well done. I did it first at normal mm -hmm. speed and it just didn't. You know, doing it in slow motion was really the thing to do in that case. Yeah, that that worked well. That was a, that was a that was a well put together scene with the you know, with that with that roller. And like I say, over overall the uh, you know the the concept you know and and what you what you brought to us you know was very entertaining. The <clears throat> part that got me was more of the more like a movie where you go through the car wash. And the sound is very low and muted. And then you come out with this loud screeching sound of a car. <laughs> uh, you led me from calm to action. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that one. Yeah, that was that, that was very Hollywood. <laughs> Mr. Yoberg, watch out. <laughs> Anything else? All right, the next one is Nature's Inspiration. This is Sylvia's. And the score is 24.5. Thank you. Yes, I, I saw I saw the hummingbird. Yeah. Yep. That was that was very nice. The uh, you know the 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 intent of that was you know was carried through, in relaxing, calming, just what it was uh, supposed to be. I like how the water the water scenes were interspersed with the other with the other scenes. Uh, the one the one rough spot I'd say is the close up of the zebra long winged butterfly where. The recorded sound comes in and it highlights one of the big problems with using actual recorded sound outside when you're doing stuff is there's always airplanes, traffic noise, lawnmowers. There's always there's always something out there that's going to pick up. It sounds like all of a sudden we got that scene of the butterfly and it sounds like there's a lawnmower running behind the, the camera. If, yeah. if you were going to redo that, I'd I'd cut the uh, I'd cut that audio out on that. But otherwise, uh, yeah. that was uh, that was you know that was very well done. Good transitions used in that. There was a mix of transitions without it being uh, too gimmicky, and uh, and some nice slow motion scenes in there. That was uh, overall uh, well done. Yeah. Where was uh, I do from? have one small major complaint. <laughs> small major complaint. <laughs> yeah. 
and said, "I want to know why you did the blue, uh, the light blue framing on some of the images and not on the other." Well, actually, I was going to ask the question. That evidently, it's the way I shot some of the scenes. I, Even in full screen, they were smaller, and I was going to ask I, because that's my not knowing the how to. I knew what that was, you know, when I saw it. Yes, you, you, some, some of the stuff was recorded at higher resolution than right. other stuff. You had different resolutions, and you, and the stuff that was in smaller resolution had to have the uh, border around right. it, right. because, yeah, you because you probably using software that doesn't allow you to uh, to scale, you know, to scale everything, you know, appropriately. So I don't know what resolutions you shot at, but I realized that the uh, border was most likely due to a mix uh, mix of resolutions that you were shooting at. Yeah, I realized that too after I was putting it together, and I went, "Darn, I don't like that," but I, I didn't really know how to change it. So well, you 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 figured out a a not very a not too distracting workaround. Right. That was, you know that was a that was a nice you know a nice color to put behind it. You know, a nice soothing light blue. You know, so that was uh, you. You you made a decent workaround. <laughs> let, me, let me point out just one small one small other uh, workaround. When you get all your slides and your your assets together, take them into Lightroom and then scale them all. Export them at the same scale. Oh, okay. And then they'll all be the same size. They may, they, they, you might have a little bit of loss of resolution, but they will all be the same size. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, the next one is New Zealand 2024. This is Diana Cahill's, and the score is 22.9. Okay, here's my thoughts on that. That was uh, that was that was nice to watch, and the the issue that uh, that I have with it overall is the still photos kind of overpower the video. Every video clip has an accompanying photo, and it looks more like the production is there is put together so that the video is the setup for the photo, and the photo is the hero in in this instance that that was the overall impression i got there were some nice things that were done in that the uh the the little titles are you know very short go away uh go away quickly like they should there is a there's a sudden change in the beat and the tempo of the music and there is a there is a jump cut that happens on that which is something you should do if you have what happened in that video where the music has that drastic of a jump where the music changes, that should also be a point where you have a cut in your uh, in your video that matches, and that that was done there. Robert, yeah, that's that was the the jump were a little abrupt for me. Uh, needed at least a smoother transition between the two, and yes, the the music was um, 
was a little off from the actual imagery insertion. So, yes, uh, I'm going to I'm going to do one of those things that I rarely do, but I'm going to do it anyway. What Jim said. <laughs> <laughs> any other any other comments, guys? Okay. You have any Maybe thoughts, Lynn? Huh? Any thoughts from you? I I I personally liked all the you know, I've never been to New Zealand and I kind of like seeing the Kanaka tree, which, you know, is like the most famous tree in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the other issue is, yeah, I kind of felt the same way you did that, that the, the, the videos were kind of leading up to the beautiful still images, beautiful still images, yeah. but they, they sort of like they did, they kind of overpowered uh, the videos and this was a video assignment. So um yeah that was that's fair too. i was just yeah. using clips that i had taken on the yeah. trip and then using them to lead into the photos <laughs> that i liked the best from the trip so that's yeah. what i did uh, yep. <laughs> there you okay. go hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think it would be a great you know if you're going to share it with your friends or on social media that would be a great tr trip for them yeah. it kind of it kind of got, went a little too far for the assignment so but anyway, it, the pictures the are beautiful pace, yeah did the pace seem too fast um yes a little and, bit, yeah. I yeah. Mean, especially okay. when the music was slow. So it was originally like a minute forty-five because I can't add to ninety seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and then I refused to re-edit it, so I mm -hmm. re-imported it and re-edit. That, that, like, was, fine. Yeah, that yeah. was no. Yeah, it was fine. Nope. It was bad. Yeah. 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 Nobody got dinged for going a little bit over. Nope. No problems yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. I got a few phone calls about like, it's like, don't worry about it. It's that's fine. <laughs> We're just trying to keep it down to a low, you know. Minimum. Oh, I got mine under 90 seconds, but you I did it by yeah. re-importing, yeah. speeding the whole thing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's in some of the video uh, editors, you can actually slow it down by, you know, half. You can actually yeah. adjust the speed. So that's the other, another option as well. So, yeah. um, okay. The next one is plane, train, and automobile. This is Lee's and the score is 23.7. Okay, on that one, the the music and the uh, and the visuals didn't always keep pace with each other. The music was perfect with the train sequence, with how fast that train was moving. And everything the music was perfect there, but at the opening, when it's raindrops splashing against a window, and then also a little following scene where it's you know the airplane going through the clouds and the clouds are drifting by the pace of the music and the pace of the visuals um, don't match. Also with the, with the slow as the car was moving through the water at the end, that's something where you would, uh, with the pace of that music, you would have like a bunch of jump cuts where you cut most of it out and the car is here, 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 you know, splashing through the water with that pace of the music. You don't, with that pace of the music, you really wouldn't want to have the car just moving slowly through the scene along with the music. With that music, you want to have car, 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 you know, like that, or, you know, speed it up 300% or something to, uh, to go with the music. 
but the, I, the, there was, you know, the, the, the background audio and the music were mixed together. You know, you both audio tracks were mixed together. Well, that, that was, uh, that was well done. And when I say the, that, that's that center scene with the speeded up sequence of the, uh, of the train moving with the music that worked well. Okay. Uh, Lee, I got a question for you. If you, if, if I may, please, if you're in the house. Yep. Yeah, he's here. Okay. You gave me a lot of the plane, <laughs> a little bit less of the train, and very little of the car. But you gave the title equal billing, planes, train, and car. Help me. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's just a mix of what I came up with. That's all. Okay. All right. I, 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 will, I think I've, I've, I've beat up on you enough. <laughs> Hate yeah, me later. I say that I was expecting whenever you, you had the, you know, the airport, then the train at the airport, then I was expecting you to, you know, get in the car in the uh, parking garage and, you know, shooting through traffic and stuff for the, for yeah, the that would make more sense. Yeah. That, would have been... that, 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 that would have been a good storyline. I absolutely yeah. agree right. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the first two sequence were tied in with the airport, and then the last sequence was, you know, yeah. was not associated uh, with, with that at all. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, the last part of it was the destination. <laughs> <laughs> I thought okay. it was really fun to see the, the fast train and, when it was. Yeah, and, uh, and based on that, that yeah, go really ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Tori. Go ahead. No, no, I just I just thought it was really fun. I felt like I was sitting inside that train and going super fast. So that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a cool sequence. That was that was uh, neat. And in, in what we were just talking about, you know, you might consider if you want to remake that Lee, uh just getting some scenes of driving on the highway interspersed with that then getting to the destination then you get the you know, leaving the air then you kind of get the sense of leaving the airport and then you're at the destination. Mm -hmm. well, and, and you could easily fit in some scenes, you know, from the car, just like you did with the train, with these, you know, speeding down the highway that would match up to the music. Well, I did some time lapse driving through mountain roads, but uh, you said not to use so much time lapse. So, otherwise, yeah, a, li yeah, a little bit is a little bit is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on to the next one is Polar Bears. This is Lee Wins. And the score is 25.3. Are these all going to be posted, Lynn, so we could watch them again? Yeah, the video will be posted. Uh, it's, this is not, I can't really uh, post these on the website like I do the, the still images, so you'll have to watch the video. So where will that be? The medium video is where all the medium video. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Sorry, <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Jim.
Well, there was some real nice camera work there. Nice, nice music that uh, that went with that. The uh, what I'd say is in the second half, where there's all those scenes of the bears and the snowdrift. That could really benefit from a little bit of that Ken Burns effect. Right. Everything is stationary camera position, stationary, 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 and just a just a little bit of slow zoom or a little bit of slow pan would 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 really enhance that long section of the uh, the bears in the snowdrift. Yeah, I thought those the middle section was a little too long because there wasn't much going on. Um, That's yeah. why I say, you know, yeah. so some Ken, Ken Burns, Burns effect with, you know, yeah. with some with some, you know, apparent camera motion, you know, zoom in or something like that would uh, would enhance that uh, certainly. Robert is Lee Wan here? No, she's uh, still in in Africa. Okay, all right. When she comes back from Africa, tell me, tell uh, Lee Wan to give me three versions of the same subject instead of two versions of the same subject. <laughs> what do you mean three versions? Well, we have the intro where they're walking across the, uh, mm -hmm. the ice and then we have them inside uh, the ice and then that's it, that's two yeah. versions. All right, so you need another, you basically you need another scene. Yes. Yep. Right, because- Act one, some, act two, yeah. act three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you need more. There needs a little bit be just a little bit more uh, transition from something to something else at the end, like yeah. they're walking off, going away. Yes. I mean, actually, she could have used like, the second, maybe the second or third clip where they're walking in front of the ice. She could have put that at the end, and that would have been yep. better. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You could have had the first se the first scene of them moving across the ice, then the, in the snow drift, and then the other scene of them moving across the ice again as the as the outro. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That should have been at the end. That would have made it a lot you know, a little more uh more yep. I guess I, I agree, Lynn. All right, next one is Raising Junior and this one's Kathy's and the score is twenty four point four. Okay. Nice. Good, good story flow with, uh, with telling the story, you know, beginning, middle, end, lots of nice scenes, uh, audio soundtrack and, uh, and recorded audio mixed together. Well, um, Kathy, were, were you using a, uh, a tripod for uh, most of those scenes or handheld in most of those scenes or? Um, Jim, I, I started out, this was kind of a study I was doing because I, I found out that the kestrels were endangered. And then I said, well, maybe I can make a story out of this. So I started out not having a tripod and then I bought a gimbal and then I had to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so some of it, <laughs> it's, it was a work in progress is what I'd have to say. And it mm -hmm. was over several months. So um by the end i did learn but uh, 
yeah, it was a variety. Well, well, good. That's that's good that you made the investment and and learn. I, I'm sure you can see as as you worked with it the the improvement that you get, you know, with the uh, with the stability, you right. know, from from, yeah. from doing that. Yeah. yeah, because because yeah because yeah jerky video is hard to watch and you know smoother is, is yeah. smoother and is I, better. Yeah, and and, and uh, it was a work in progress. Yep. No, it was a it was it was uh, it was it was a good documentary that was uh, that was presented about that. Now that this this also is an example for for everyone why you know we we always talk about uh, you know dust spots on sensors. It's even way more critical to have a clean sensor when you're doing video <laughs> because dust spots right. aren't, aren't that bad to take out of still photos. Right. Dust spots are absolute hell to deal with in a video production. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't have it. There is no spot removal tool <laughs> right. for right. Uh, when, when you're doing uh, when you're doing yeah. videos. Yeah, that was definitely a work in progress and a learning experience for. Well, that's all. that that that's great. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it it it's great to do it and learn from it. Yeah, I like the fact that you added the dates so that gave us some idea of the time frame that we were talking about. You know, you mm -hmm. the only only thing I had the very first couple of uh, clips where the uh, Kestrels got the lizard, they did a little too long, just a little oh. too long. Yeah, you want to keep those really fairly short and just to get the idea okay he's got food this now is, let's move on to you know the mist so and yeah. this is something everybody does when they when they start doing video you put so much effort into recording all this stuff and you have you have all this footage and just like when you start out with still photos it's you know it's so hard to learn to color your photos and you know and get rid of the clunkers because you you shot so many pictures and they all mean something to you. The same thing happens with people when they start out with video. They shoot all this footage and it is hard to cut that footage down, you know, once you shoot all that because it's like, oh, well, all of this is good, so I want to include it. But okay. that doesn't necessarily make an interesting yeah. production for someone else to look at. It's, you know, just like learning to color your still photos. Learning to learning to cut and chop your video footage is uh, is kind of a is a difficult transition to go through, but you have to learn to do it. Yeah, if you watch if you watch professional things on online, a lot of times you know stuff like that, you'll see a lot of things don't a lot of clips don't run past five seconds. A lot of clips are you know are you know anywhere from a half second to five seconds. You know, ten seconds is like Wait, really long <laughs> in things like this. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my that was one of the difficulties in doing 90 seconds with this was I had so many clips. Yep. And, and to keep the story flowing was Yes. Was that's one of that that's one of the that's that's one of the most difficult hurdles to get through when you start doing video is to is is to learn how to how to keep it short and how to keep the pace moving. Yeah. And and and, uh, and us and us humans are pretty if we're paying attention to what we're watching, we don't need a lot of time to see what's going on. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the other issue. So, I mean, and I, three and more I seconds. Through, yeah. yeah. I ran it through some friends of mine and they edit, you know, they gave me feedback on it and I had to change it based on that too. <laughs> so. You're going to get different opinions from everybody. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoops. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, the next one is Riverwalk. Uh, this is Tories, and the score is 24.7. No, I have another one. Sure. No, what? Yeah, they're in, uh, they're not in al your name order. They're in alphabetical order by They're in alphabetical order. They're in, by they're title. in alphabetical order by title. Yeah, we have, we're in the R's. We haven't gotten to the S's yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm down at the Tampa Riverwalk area, so let's just see what we got here.
Tampa needs to use that for uh, advertising. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll yeah. say that was uh, well well done with picking a concept and then visualizing the concept that you wanted to show. Hey, this is the River Walk, and this is what the River Walk is like, especially if you're someone that's never seen it and give somebody an overall impression. That was uh, that was executed right. well. What is the score? And Lynn, he's asking what the score is. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh... The score on that one was twenty four point seven. So it had a uh, it it had a it had a fun social media kind of vibe to it, which uh, which worked right. well. You you used a lot of interesting camera techniques, which and uh, which was uh, very nice. The the one uh, the the one like what did Robert call it a small major issue <laughs> was <laughs> you, you had a really cool camera technique. But then you put words over it that said, just had to try this, which actually <laughs> yeah. takes us away from yeah. the cool camera technique uh, we're watching okay. because suddenly we're looking at the words and, and then suddenly we're out of what the Riverwalk experience is about. Mm -hmm. And we're in your head as the videographer about <laughs> what you're thinking about what you're doing as the videographer. And then we have to get back into the video. So that was, that was, that was a, the one you know issue I had with that was we, okay. we didn't need the words there to detract from what we were seeing and to break the flow in that, you know, in that instance. Right. I love right. the transitions. I, I also love the, uh, the way you, when you were playing your musical background, you switched when you went past the musician and you lowered your musical background so his music could come up. That was really cool. Yeah. Right. I like yeah, to work with that. <laughs> I like video uh, ever, so. I loved it. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> I, I thought it was clever when you shot the scene through the fence. I thought that was an interesting yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, look for yeah. Different, a variety of different views. Yeah, the yeah the different camera angles and perspectives. That was uh, that 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 kept it visually interesting and it never got boring. And by the way, that's when you when you do that effect where your soundtrack goes down for goes down in level to allow the recorded. Yeah. Audio to, to show, but you don't lose it. And then it comes back. They call mm -hmm. that ducking. The technique is called ducking. The, the, okay. the soundtrack, the soundtrack ducks in level under the recorded audio and then comes back up. So if, right. if you're, you know, as you're studying video production, that is called d audio ducking. Oh, okay. Yes, I wanted to have the the tram was making a little doo doo sound as it came mm -hmm. by, so I thought, okay, I'll have to incorporate that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, I used good. my cell phone for all of this, so it was pretty choppy. I can see that mm -hmm. afterwards, but mm -hmm. you know, first That's video. Yeah, so. yeah, that for a first video, was that fun. was fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Thank you. That, it was fun. Yeah. Oh. So if, if that's your first video, we expect better from there. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I really no don't pressure. understand how you can make a first video and expect it to be uh, in the Emmy Awards uh, category. I just don't understand it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so right. it, if you do make, if any of you make a video and it comes out perfect the first time, it's all downhill from there. So you <laughs> want it to be bad. So you can go forward from there. Yeah, yeah. It was a fun project. Yeah. I have, a I have a question. So, Jim, with that thing, is that, does she lay two different tracks on there? Is that yeah. how you were able to duck it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yep, you and, use, and you use and you use the, you use the audio controls in your editing software to control the levels of the uh, of the audio tracks. Right. Yeah, got it. Yep. All right. And, uh, yep. Okay. yep. Some okay. some programs you, you can tell it to automatically do it for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next one is Screech Owls. This is Lee Wins, and the score is twenty four point four. Are we going to get a potty break? <laughs> 
Yeah, after the end of this, let's we okay. can, we need to keep moving. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave this one up and uh, and scr scrub to a couple things. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, th this is nicely filmed, interesting subject matter. Uh, why not? I'm going to use it as a to as an educational thing for a couple things. When you if you do crossfades on scenes that have a lot of detail in them and the crossfade is slow that's what you see going on in here where you see watch the you know watch like all the tree bark and everything gets this weird kind of distorted look when you when you see in some of these uh, crossfades let me find uh, where it ha you know an instance of it uh, let me go back to yeah in here there's some uh, there's some sections in here yeah there There's there's some places where the tree bark gets like the details mixed together badly and make kind of a moray pattern and uh, whatnot when the uh, when the crossfade happens. So be aware of that. You'll probably see it here in just a second on uh, on this. Now that one wasn't too bad, but there's a couple places where it uh, where it's really noticeable there. How do you avoid that, Jim? You, you don't use such a long crossfade or you use a different transition uh, you know it, there did you see that that's that's an example right there watch there you see that you see how distorted and everything all the all the details become in that during that crossfade there you see that yeah so that, that's that's down. visually visually distracting if she slowed yeah. down the crossfade would that no be you speed it up you make it a very short duration crossfade. Also, you you see this jello effect that's happening here? Yeah. Yeah. That that is and that is called jello effect by the way. Uh, you you're going to see that in another video too and we'll we'll I'll tell you what causes that and how to avoid that there but but this is uh that they they call it jello effect. Yeah, there was another one of those uh crossfades. See that? That one was not as bad, but just wanted to point that out with this one for uh, for learning experience. I like the change of the music. It was kind of abrupt, the change of the music from between the adults and then the kids, because the kids were making that funny head mm -hmm. bobbing thing. But I think the whole second half was there was too much of the kids. I mean, I like the one where he's putting his foot on the other head, kid's head and mm -hmm. then he gets fed. But I think we didn't need a, probably 20 or 30 seconds 
could have been cut cut out of that yeah. of just the kids in the hole. So yeah, and again, when something like that happens, when it's a you know when it's long things, when it's long clips like that, mm-hmm. that yeah, do do some Ken Burns effect, pan you know left, right, up, down, diagonal, zoom in, you know, do a combination, something like that. It it visually it it doesn't make it seem like it's as long as it is it you know it kind of it kind of tricks the viewer into thinking there's more going on and it seems like you know it it, the pace moves better when you uh when you do that is the ken burns effect like the name of an effect in iMovie it's It's the name of a of an effect in cinematography overall yeah oh it's named out like after the documentarian Yes. 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 Because yeah, he's because he's famous for you know doing it in his documentaries. Absolutely. Yeah. because he uses so many still photos, historic photos, you know, like from the Civil War and stuff like yeah. that, in order to make them interesting. Instead of just having this still photo on on the screen while they talk about you know what this what the photo is illustrating, the photo the camera you know the, the, and the camera doesn't actually do it, it's done in post but it zooms into the picture or it zooms out of the picture or it pans left right diagonal or does a combination of those effects you know on the uh on the on the photos so he he started doing that with with the still photos to keep the pace visually moving right. and it doesn't have to be done with still photo it's also done in you know, in video scenes where you've got, you know, what they call a lockdown shot, which is what we saw there. The camera is locked down and there is no camera movements happening at all, but you add fake camera movements in during post-production. Like mine. Mine were like that. That Mm -hmm. Zen thing had a lot of that. Mm -hmm. post, But you could do it with a still. I mean, Diana, you could have done those with, could have done that with your still images. Yeah. Yeah. And that would have made a little more, more of an effect. Yeah. Anytime I put yeah, anytime I put still photos in a video, I absolutely you know do that to keep them moving. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying it's like pretty cool that somebody who's so good at documentaries got an entire cinematography effect named yeah. after him yeah. because of his yeah. style. Yep. I've never, yeah. I never knew that. I wondered where you, the name came. From. Yep, you even you can even go in a lot of uh, lots of editing software, and you know you'll specifically find it. You know, in a drop down or whatever, in the you'll see Ken Burns effect. You know, just listed as being the Ken Burns effect. You'll also hear it called pan and zoom. You know, yeah, but, you know, pan yeah. pan and zoom is Ken Burns effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, in iMovie. It's under the crop in the cro- under the crop tool. Okay, um, next one is Sherman. This is Kathy's, and the score is twenty four point one. We got one, two, three. Four. We got four more after this one. Okay, another engaging wildlife documentary. That was uh, I especially like the uh, the bit you did with the uh, you know with the freeze frame with the uh, with the bird in the tree for a minute there and the, the and the audio sound effect that that you did with that for the drama that was that was well done um, and 
I am going to bring it bring it back up. I shouldn't have sh shouldn't have shut it off. I'm going to bring it back up to uh, to show something here, um, especially on here. And I'll t I I I won't drag this too far down a technical rabbit hole, but you, you see the Jello effect here. It's pretty pronounced here that that Jello effect. Yeah, so, that, so that you know, this is this is one of the things that happens to still photographers that transition to video. We learn as still photographers that high shutter speed is good for making sharp photos of things that are moving. High shutter speed is your worst enemy in video. We like slow shutter speeds. That jello effect happens from having too high of a shutter speed. Okay. When your camera's recording video, it's uh, it's using the electronic shutter, and when you get into a very high shutter speed, you're actually overrunning the processor's capability of keeping up with the uh, with the scan rate on the uh, on the electronic shutter and being able to stabilize it, and you get that weird wow wow wow. You know they they call it Jello effect. This is this is why in video neutral density filters are your friend because you want to slow your shutter speeds way down. And okay. uh, what should he it, should he have used? It, it stops, it helps stop that, that jello effect. It's also called rolling shutter effect. It, okay. you know, it's a stabilization issue. It's, yeah. it can be fixed in post to a certain extent, but not, you know, not all, not always once it's, you know, once it's too bad. The, the jello effect we saw with the screech owls was probably just within the limit of what some software can fix. What we saw in the beginning of this is beyond what, you know, probably okay. beyond what most software can fix with the, uh, with a, and if you have software that's capable of doing it, you look for rolling shutter repair is uh, is what you're looking for to fix that in your software if your software is capable of it. it's called rolling shutter repair it can help uh you know can help fix that to a certain extent but you gotta you gotta slow your shutter speeds down in video which is counterintuitive to what you learn as a still photographer yeah you, well, yep you, yeah, if you get high high iso and you're running high shutter speeds you're you're in for trouble in a video <laughs> Well, so what shutter my, speed problem, you my problem was that I was doing kestrels and squirrels at the same time. <laughs> and some of it was still, some of it was movie. And yeah, I kept mixing them up. And, and yeah. I knew that was a problem. And I wanted to talk to you about that, Jim. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's that the shutter yeah. speed is too high. The yeah. ideal shutter speed in cinematography is double your frame rate. So okay. if you're shooting 30 FPS, the ideal frame rate is 60, 1 60th of a second. Now try and get 1 60th of a second out there in daylight on a bright sunny day. Yeah. That's why we use neutral density filters for video. Even if you can't get down to a 60th of a second, just get it down you know, as far as you can get it down or shoot at 60 frames per second. And then your ideal, you know, your ideal shutter speed is one one twentieth of a second. But I say in the in the world of still photography, in a you know, bright sunny day, these are ridiculously slow speeds. <laughs> you know, in our head, we're like, yeah, yeah. you know. But yeah. yeah, you have to you have to think. Just you have to get in your head. Slow shutter speed for yeah. video, and if you if you need it, you got to put those neutral density filters on there. Okay, and it, it was so, I knew I I have a you know a function that I can turn to that we set up for the uh, movies and I would turn to that, but my long disc or my telephoto lens wasn't actually focusing properly. So I, I had some issues, right. some technical mm -hmm. issues, and I need to talk to you about that. But <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Robert, anything <laughs> quickly? Uh, no, we're, we're good. Okay. All right. You next one it. is the Sardana. This is Karen's and the score is 22.6.
Okay, I'm going to leave it up uh, just for a minute. We have a we have a video here. It's one one scene, one clip that you know that shows something. So there's not a whole lot of a story going on. We we do get to see one scene of what's going on here. However, uh, from a technical standpoint, this is seriously overexposed. Yeah. Now, if this were <laughs> if this were part of you know part if there was like an overall movie put together and multiple scenes were done this way, you know, as an artistic, you know, effect, you know, that, but in this case, it's, you know, it, it's simply, uh, you know, I don't know how it happened, but it's severely overexposed. And I don't know if there was any option to crop in post-production, but the wall on the right that keeps, you know, coming into play is, is a big visual <laughs> distraction on the right-hand side. <laughs> I just wanted to participate tonight. Um, I haven't done, I've got obviously a whole lot to do, but I wanted to submit something, but I, it, it was not that overexposed on my phone. So that's weird. Yeah. Usually yeah. the phones are better at that. You could have like, yeah. taken a usually the phone is yeah. pretty good about judging yeah. the exposure. Yeah. Yeah. You could have taken a picture of the dancers, Karen, then stopped, taken another clip of your, your uh, musicians, then stopped and then came back and sh shot another clip of the dancers mm -hmm. and then you could have put those three together and it would have looked uh, much better yeah yeah just yeah it's it, i'm glad you participated but <laughs> <laughs> do i get the trophy for playing <laughs> yeah for, you get you get a you get a you, get a, you know a trophy for participation <laughs> robert anything uh yeah you got to go back to france and redo that one no that was spain you gotta go back to Spain and redo <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go back and redo it. Okay. All right. You can also bring those clips into, into Lightroom and do some adjustments as well. Okay. Okay. The next one is Turquoise e bike ride. This is Brian's, and the score is 24.8. made me want to go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, there, I'm unmuted. Yeah, Brian, that's why I was asking you if the other one was your first or second video, because this one had so much more of a cohesive and smooth flowing storyline with the you know, beginning, middle, you know, end, you know, very, you know, very well done with you know, showing the bike coming off of the off of the car that this is the beginning of what's going on, loading the bike back on at the end. What's what's going on in between the the speed that things were moving was well paced with the <laughs> music. I enjoyed that. And in this instance, I'll say it was a it was a good thing that you put up the quick little blurb about the dog was OK, because in, in this instance, had you not done that, <laughs> then we would have spent too much time worrying about did the dumb little dog actually achieve his death wish and we would have been just distracted from your video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you great. get the video with you from behind? Was that you on the bike from the back? How do you yes. how did Yeah. He left he set the camera up and then drove by it. Uh, yeah, on a tripod and then yes. rode away from mm -hmm. it. Okay. 
Wow, that was, and, uh, that's a lot of work. That, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that that's that's great to put that effort into it. That yeah. was yeah. that you know that that was all. Then that's and that's what it takes, you know, to you know to tell a story and put something together to think about it and then execute the plan in, in when you're making a video production there is a lot more involved with you know with executing your idea in a lot of cases than uh, than a still photo you know putting a whole production together and, and thinking thinking through it and what you're going to do and putting that extra effort into doing things like that setting up a tripod filming yourself you know and uh, whatnot um brian what were you uh, what were you using to film the scenes while you were actually riding the bike I was holding my camera in front of me. Okay, so you were using your your mirrorless camera, holding it up. Yes. And, okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll tell you, you are going to be so happy that you got the GoPro Twelve yeah. now for. I, for I got scenes. a chest mount on the way too. There's a chest <laughs> mount for it and a head mount I'll, as well. Uh, I'll, I'll 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 tell you the settings you're you're going to want to use and uh, and once you start getting some new footage with that, uh, you, you'll you'll really be happy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I just wanted to get my feet wet and see if I even had any interest before I spent a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yep. That that was uh, that that yeah. one was well done. Yeah, Robert. Thank you. Truth be told, Brian, is that you did not do that video, but just on your the first video, uh, you did that one. But the second one, you hired a team to come in and help you out with that. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Well done. All right. I, I guess I'm All glad right. I turned in a bad one, so I got a lot of good feedback to improve. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> All right, we got two. We got two more. Two more to go. And then we got the, the generals. We'll have to speed through. Yeah, um, and there's not too many. There's not too many general to get through. Okay, so. Brian, where was that shot? Uh, near Venice, Florida. Okay. Are you going to give food. us a potty break, or are my eyeballs? Gonna we fall? have two more, Diane, and then we'll take a break before we do the generals. You can always go on a break on your own if you want to. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is I have upside, down, upside down and inside out. Uh, this is my image. And be ready. This music is loud. My score is 24.9. one <laughs> that was yep very opposite of the other one very very visually engaging very very appropriate music you got that that cool fast-paced techno visuals with the fast-paced techno music that worked well together um the the one thing that happened with that there was actually the the fade in from black before the title at the beginning was so long i could hear the music but I couldn't see anything. And the first time I watched it, I thought something was wrong with my video player because I was hearing music, but not seeing anything for, well, for I, such I a long did time. I did that on purpose because I wanted you to kind of get ready with the music and then hear, start seeing everything. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, I started looking for the, I started looking for the controls on my screen and then the video <laughs> hit me while I was trying to look for the controls to see what was wrong with my video player. So, but that was, uh, that was interesting. There's, uh, there's, there's a, there's a whole genre of that out there. I have, I have a friend that has a wall of TVs in his room and that's what he plays. He, every TV on the wall is on YouTube where there's, you know, like five hours of this and five hours of that, of that stuff. And you, it's, visually mind melting when you walk into his house and that's what's playing on an entire wall of televisions with a different one on every television. 
but that was uh that was that was uh that was fun thanks yeah um uh, i'm ready to go dancing <laughs> <laughs> yep See, I let you rest, and then I get you all hyped up. Yes. yes. So I've already peed, and uh, <laughs> oh, got my out. rest, and I'm ready well, to go and, out and, and dance. Yeah, just, I put it at the very end, but it was that was created on my iPhone with the Inception app that's only available on the iPhone, unfortunately. But, yeah, it's it has a still section. It's kind of like a kaleidoscope, and then it has a video section, and those were all videos that I created with that app. So, And that was at the State Fair. Where do you? Oh, you shot it at the state fair with yeah. that app. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Let's. Last but not least is water in motion. This is Lee's, and the score is twenty four point four. I have a question. Go ahead. Lee, was that Lee? Was that you playing? Uh, oh. no. <laughs> Did you say no? He said no. 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 Okay. Well, that was uh, that was very nice. the The pace of the music went well with that. You had some good camera work going on in there. Um, especially, I'm going to say right here at this mark, this this long pan down the waterfall. Right here. That was a very nice. Uh, that was a very nice pan right there with the uh, camera, and it looked like when you were doing uh, the the zooming effects there and further in here, the the zoom in, you were doing that uh, in camera. It looks like is that correct? Yeah, it was in camera. Yeah, which is very hard to do. If that that's what, that that that's why it's usually done, you know, in post. You can you can see a little bit where you where you first you know first you know grab the lens, start to twist, and then, you know, and then there's a hesitation, and, and then it moves again. If you were editing this again, I'd say see there's that little jerk, and then it starts going smooth. Cut in as it's you know moving into the smooth part you know skip past the the little hesitation where you're zooming in but overall that's good and it is hard it is hard to manually zoom while you're recording video it's uh normally it, normally in hollywood it's a two person procedure there's one person operating the camera and another person operating the lens they normally have two people uh, working the camera to to make that happen yep. oh. that's why again ken burns effect is so effective <laughs> yeah it's so important yeah mm -hmm. the uh the the opening bit uh you know right here that this this water that's that's a really nice yeah. opening right there i like that the uh the end is a little abrupt a, a little fade out would be nice we've got just this kind of yeah, just boom yeah, yeah a lot <laughs> a lot of them tonight didn't have you should at least add a a fade out at the end. A lot of them. You a fade, could add just, yeah, yeah. A fade a black, on the music and a yeah. and a fade on the you know a fade on the music, fade on the video. You know, like a like a like a like even a one second to one point five second you know fade out of music and fade to black on the video is uh, is good on something like this. Yeah. You know, so it, especially when it just interrupts the music, just like without the music fading out, it's it's a it's a hard ending. Right. Now, yeah. see, I had the complete different. Um, trend, um, thought on that one some of the other ones i thought should have faded out but the way that one kept moving 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 and you have some songs that just end and i thought that worked mm -hmm. well with that one 
Mm-hmm. And you and you can do that. You know, sometimes it's a point. It's a matter of finding just the right point in the audio to you know to make that happen. You know, and that that is done sometimes if you can find. You know, you, you can end on the beat. You know, and whatever. I'll, all a lot of the professional video editors will actually let you zoom right into the waveform of the audio so that you can actually find the the precise position in an audio track to to do your uh, to do your cuts. Everybody go to the bathroom really quick. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Lightroom so we can do our generals. We have 17 of those, so we're going to have to go through them pretty quickly. Great job, people. That's awesome. Everybody. That's awesome. For a first time out doing video assignment, that was fantastic. Hey, Lin, could you repeat you said August 7, go out to this water location and uh, time? I'm not understanding what you're saying. <laughs> you said the outdoor, but when when meeting club meeting. So oh, the time? outing. When is the outing? Outdoor. Uh, yes, shooting. Yeah, the next outdoor. one. Well, the next one is at the Chihuly Collection, which is the 27th, and that's indoors. 27. Yeah, the 27th of July, a Saturday. It's on the. Uh -huh. Go look at the website. It's on the website. On the website. Yeah, it's okay. on our website. Yeah, I need to go to the restroom. <laughs> Hey, Fung, how have you been? Uh, good. I travel a lot. I know. From been, uh, Italy to England, then to Germany, go to Prusa on the uh, <laughs> river cruise. Well, you, you really Thank know you how river. to... You really know how to retire, that's for sure. Yeah, total about the two months. And uh, before I go to Turkey and uh, um, Greece, <laughs> then go home a couple of days, then go another go country. Oh, okay, okay. I got a question for Jack. Hey, Jack, how much honey do you get out of that beehive? He might have gone to the bathroom. You're muted, Jack. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Several times. I'm 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 playing games with my audio. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. That's better. Yes. Yeah. Um I I harvest two times a year, once in the spring and then once in the fall before uh, winter. And um uh, I can get a, somewhere around 80, 80 uh, pounds. It, the harvest is measured in weight. Um, honey weighs approximately 10 pounds a gallon. And uh, so I can get sometimes eight gallons uh, wow. at, at a time. <laughs> One hive. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a second hive now. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to get it this weekend. Um, I'm getting a second hive, but uh, um, all my friends want honey, and <laughs> I don't have enough to go around. <laughs> so how many, times have you been, how many times have you been stung? I get stung all the time. It's like oh, mosquitoes. Really? You, they're, they're, yeah. like, they're like little mosquitoes. Yeah, See, when I, I, never, I check my I was hive. never stung with mine. I never got stung, but then I only had them about eight months. Yeah. And then they just disappeared. <laughs> and they're good at getting yeah. caught in your hair. Jim or uh, Jack doesn't have that problem, but I was at his house at his patio and one got caught in my hair. And I'm like, I don't want to swat it. I don't want to swat it, but get it out of there. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 a lot of times I'll just open the hive just to see how it's going. And uh, I don't even bother to put on the outfit, uh, but as do long you, as you, you move open it, slowly, do you ever, it, it doesn't you ever bother open them. It without smoking it? Yeah, Jack, I can open you, it without smoking it. But I okay. did smoke this one. I don't yeah, know I if saw you the noticed smoke. it. Yeah. I how long, how long have you been doing uh, doing beehives? About 10 years. Wow. 
Yeah. It's a lot of work, isn't it? No, it's not. It's actually a wonderful hobby. It's not a lot of work. Now, when you go to when you go to harvest, yes, that's that that becomes very um, challenging. Is time consuming. <laughs> and it takes me a whole day to to harvest and then spin it down and put it in the bottles and all that. But uh, uh, it's worth it. But that's the only time that uh, you don't have to feed these guys. You don't have to do anything to them. That just make sure you don't trim the bushes too much. Let let the blossoms all bloom on your bushes, oh, wow. especially fire bush. We have a lot of fire bush, and uh, you they don't love even that have fire to. Bush. You don't even have to film. I mean, feed in the winter. No, not not okay. in Florida. I had to. Did you? Yeah. All right, guys, yeah. let's get back going here. Uh, we got 17 images to get through, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and bring up. Oh, crap. Wait a minute. I'm going to bring Leia up. up here. <laughs> Hold on a second. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. You know, Jack, videos about bees are very popular in, on Instagram. You have a built in following. You yeah. can talk oh. into that. It's always oh, another great I... day of saving the bees on Instagram. <laughs> I, I have seen so many videos and uh, yes, they're, uh, they're, they're all over the place there and Facebook as well. Yeah. There, you can learn all about high hives and bees just by going to the internet. I took that class out at USF. They offered it at the, uh, you know, where they sell the flowers and stuff over there. Yeah, at the that's, yeah, that's horticulture where I, center. Yeah, that's where I went. That's the how I did it the first first time. Yeah, I learned from my son. He's a beekeeper. Okay, he gotcha. taught me. All right, guys, I'm yeah, ready now. Let's go ahead and teach you. It's going on. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you see my light room? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, the first one is orchids. This is Jack's and the score is 23.6. Okay. Robert, um, Jim, come on. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can you hear me? I'm, is, yeah, am I being heard? I'll, I'll let Robert go. He's probably yeah. gonna say what I'm gonna say. Uh, Jack, your cutouts are a little too clean. Yep. Right here. Yeah. What, do you mean, what do you mean by that, Robert? Take a look at those. Those uh, uh, you've used a, some sort of a texture and as a backdrop, right? Background. Right. Yeah. And so, if you look on the edges there, um, yeah. they are all very, very cleanly cut. And you see how that it has those light black line around it? Right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you know that there's yeah. no, no fade. Yeah, you you need to yeah you need to like blur the edges a little bit. Yeah, I I, I did do. It. I guess I didn't do enough, but yeah, they look punched out. Yeah, they look like they're cut out. It's, it's the old, uh, the old exacto knife cut and paste look. Right. <laughs> they, 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 I, I have a question for you. What was the, what was your thinking in in not having the stem on there? It, yeah. it, it feels like this makes it feel like there's a bunch of blossoms that are like laid onto a table overlapping each other mm -hmm. with without the stem. Visually, to me, it feels a it feels a little awkward, like it's a pile of blossoms laying there. Yeah. Your sound is messing up, Jack. Your your mm -hmm. audio is all messed up, Jack. Oh, can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah, it, 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 it with the stems, it just looked too cluttered and it looked cleaner without it to me. But I, I, I understand your point of view. You said you said stems as in multiple. Oh, yeah. Plural. OK, see, there I were, would. There were about three. There were about three stems. OK, because I could look at this as being like one cluster and, you know, I could envision a stem, yeah. you know, coming out the lower left out into the corner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. I understand it, it's multiples composited together. Yeah. Well, they okay. were film. They were photographed together. Okay. And it, 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 
it, it was just too cluttered. So that's why I decided I'll take all the stems out because they were gotcha. going in different directions and I couldn't get them arranged. Okay. All right. That answers my question. There's some other places here in your background too. You see right here and right here. Can you see well, my how cursor? Do you, how do you fix that, Lynn? It's not easy when you're doing uh, backgrounds like that. You got to be careful that when you do a when you do a background, is you've got to you know you've got to remember that you've got a, a little spaces in here. There's one right here, and one there, and one there as well that you've got to deal with as well. So that, yeah, it's got to be really careful with those. When you yeah, do there's a few. Out. There's a few others as well. Yeah, there's yeah. a few <laughs> others here, like right there. Um, yeah, there's a few others. Like yeah, you got to be careful when you're doing those backgrounds like that. Is it just make sure you get all the little holes. <laughs> it happens when you put a, a dark background, uh, a light background right, against right. something that was dark. Yeah. If you'd use the dark background, then you would never even notice those. <laughs> well, if you're working, this, this, if you're working more, obviously. This, yeah. was, this was an exercise in uh, cutting out and putting it on a background. And, well, uh, I think uh, Jackie will be talking about some of this next week. So, yeah, good. Yeah, the be, problem. Be, the, yeah. Oh, hold on. The, the problem. The problem, Jack, is that you're too good of a surgeon. You know how to cut out things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my Exacto knife worked very well. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on, guys. The next one is uh, looking for Levi's. This is Susan's, and the score is twenty-two point eight. <laughs> Can you oh, go full screen funny. with there? Thanks, then. That is funny. <laughs> the the juxtaposition is is excellent in in street photography when you find these juxtapositions that work like that that you can put that kind of a title to that's fantastic <laughs> i i do have one problem though it's a hand on the left hand side of the guy's arm right here yes <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh, yeah that's two i have, i did not I mean, like sticky yeah, if he just like maybe you had stepped to the left just a little bit, Susan, it wouldn't have been quite that like. Yeah, it's hard when there's all these people, but you could have. He's standing still, I assume, or pretty much standing still. You could have moved around a little bit and waited for him to get a little clearer of all that clutter. Or you could use Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. Or use no, Photoshop. I didn't do anything. This is just a cell phone. I'm walking down the street. <laughs> he's there. I popped it up. It's Times Square. Yeah. Everybody's out, and yeah. that, and, and I didn't have time and, to finish my video. And this is the only picture, and I'd send it <laughs> ten minutes to ten. Yeah. This way. But you could and, go in your cell phone. Actually, if you had Lightroom in your cell phone, and you could put it in there and get rid of that. There are, <laughs> and there are certain circles of of purists in street photography that you know that that Photoshop is like you know oh, yeah. sacrilege to oh, do yeah. something like that among certain circles of purists in the uh in the street we, photography world <laughs> we ain't one of them and by the way susan this is all this is telling me is where your eye was when you were in new york that's right <laughs> there was lots of it <laughs> was this recent susan because i've got a picture of him like a couple of years ago Yes, it was last week. Last so he's week. still around, man. I wonder and, if it's the same cowboy. Well, actually, I'll, I I can answer that. He's a he's a franchise. He, he's yeah. like Santa Claus now. There's he he's are franchised the he's franchised the naked cowboy thing, and there are multiple naked cowboys. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's oh, brilliant. That that's is funny. brilliant. How do you know this, Jim? Oh, you just wrecked it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because move it on, guys. This one is Botan one USF Botanical Gardens. This is uh, Mark uh, Marks, one of our new members. His score is 23.5. Like all the, there's a lot of good detail right here. Oh, yeah. It's all in focus. Um, the only yes. thing I think I would have done is maybe darkened up these leaves in the back a little bit. Um, because then the fl these flowers would be more, much more prominent. Do one other thing for me, Lynn. Yes. Turn on your crop. Turn on your crop tool. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, you didn't have to come up, but yeah, coming in from the right and then, you know, an, an even amount on the left, it, you know, it can go back down a little bit on the bottom. Yeah. But the reason being is there's that, that detail thing leading out of the uh, edge of the frame on the right side. So take your crop away again. So see this? Now go, now go back and you can just go back in your history. There. See on the see on the far right side of the frame. Right here, yeah. Yeah, that that branch going out with that it looks like a little bud on the end of the branch and stuff like that. That that detail pulls the eye away to that edge of the frame. But all you have to do is crop that out. Okay. Or you can yeah, and you also can do something like this. This is very mm -hmm. quick, and if you, this leaf didn't get caught, I'd have to add that with a mm -hmm. add brush. Mm -hmm. And that would make the flowers just pop. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, then you could crop to get rid of some of that other detail mm -hmm. as well. So that makes yeah, there's, uh, flower the, brings it. Boom. There's real nice real nice depth of field through the flowers yeah. and the buds that, yeah. that catches all that detail. And uh you know, I see that's uh that's a hundred and five millimeter lens and uh in in just about any camera system that is a that is a magical focal length prime lens exactly. a 100 or a 105 th yep. those lenses are beautiful yeah well, just a little bit a, overexposed it might have been just this is my uh my my uh system is calibrated so if your your yours is not calibrated it might be just a little it looked you know it's it's was a little bright so other than that yeah, yeah. yeah. great was, great uh, uh macro uh, a new camera you know, I just got this camera a couple of weeks ago, so I took it out uh, on the 5th of July to the botanical gardens and mm -hmm. was just doing some test shots, trying to figure it out. And <laughs> yeah. This what, is one uh, that came out, and it's like, okay, this one I kind of like, and it's... <laughs> yeah. What camera was that? Uh, it's a uh, Canon... Uh, Canon, yep. Uh, this R6 mm -hmm. Mark II. Yeah, and then the... Uh, yeah. In in yeah in just about any brand Canon Nikon Pentax anything in that uh, anything in that hundred millimeter range like that hundred one hundred five uh, you know yeah eighty millimeters the that is a fantastic focal length and a prime lens for uh, shooting something like that yeah, yeah that it's, one just great uh, the for, detail that came out of it yeah. you know that yeah. was like okay, details it's awesome got a lot of good detail yeah it's great for uh, also for portraits yeah. Quick yep. introduction, the R5 II got announced yesterday, so I can finally buy my new camera, you guys. I've only been talking about it for months. <laughs> okay. Well, I was planning on get it and getting that one, but I didn't want to wait, so it's like, yeah. What yeah. did you say, Diane? The new Canon was announced yesterday, or on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. $6,000, though. Next one, no, guys, let's R5 R5 is only on. 4, The next one is Tiny Dancer. This is Sylvia's, and the score is 23.8. Nice. The little, not at least, a little crunchy. The focus seems to be, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I mean, Jim. I mean, because the antennas are really are not. It's sort of in focus right here. Look. But, let's see where the spots of the wings are. Zoom in on that. And let's see if that's where it is. It it it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of yeah. it's almost like the leaf is. Yeah. I don't know. Yep, the highlights are pretty hot on that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now at the you know up up close, you can see you know how much detail is lost in the highlights. But interestingly, when you see it smaller, that almost that almost gives it an ethereal kind of a glowing effect. Right. Yeah. I really like it zoomed out. The composition is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The good, yeah. Nicely. Yeah. Let's say once once you're zoomed out, you know the the over the the overexposure part, you know, no, actually, yeah. like I say, lends kind of a glowing effect to it, which is yeah. kind of fascinating to to look yeah. at. I think you can just, just brush the so highlights long. out of that. <laughs> well, I took the I took the highlights down a ton, but you know, I I, I... yeah, it's just no, yeah. just I mean, brush it on the little whatever the bottom. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like yeah. she's done oh. that already. Yeah, it just it's this. Yeah, yeah it's, too much of that. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. If it's if it's overexposed, if the highlights are clipped at the time the picture is taken, you're right. you're never going to get them back in post. Yeah. yeah. 
and all the and all the processing is going to make it look that's what's making it look crunchy next one is uh fox mom and this one is richards and the score is 23.6 damn are there fox kits anywhere there hidden uh, in yeah. the underbrush or something not in this photo but i got the kits too oh okay <laughs> That's what I was wondering about with the title. I think I would have gotten rid of some of this other stuff just to make the fox more prominent in the picture. We don't need the tree. I like that better. <laughs> I, I looked at I looked at that myself, and and that's okay. And I looked at it with the tree again, and and I'm I'm okay with the with the with the overall shot with with the tree. It seems kind of balanced and uh, and gives it a little bit more of a sense of the environment but you know you're right if you if the if the if the object of this is just simply okay here's a fox this is what a fox looks like then yes that that works for a you know for an environmental shot of the fox in its environment i like the tree i think they're both okay robert any questions any comments i gosh i just don't like saying this but i'm gonna go with it with jim said <laughs> Okay. I, really don't. Okay. <laughs> I looked at the same same thing. I looked at it with or without a tree. And I think it lends more interest with the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm always I always want to make the animal the most prominent thing in the, the screen, you know, in the mm -hmm. in the frame. So that's that's I, I, I understand yeah. where you're going with it, but yeah. I, I look at what you're saying is more of a portrait about the the uh yeah. the animal, but it's more of a story with the tree. Okay. Yeah. This cost me a lot of money, this picture, because last year I sold my Nikon uh, 200 to 500, because I'm not really a, a specialist in wildlife, uh, but right across the street is where I took this picture uh, <laughs> yep. in Georgia, and I had only up to 200. I, it's luckily, I, I had the, the Nikon with a lot of megapixels, yeah. the 48 megapixel, yeah. like a crop in. This is really cropped in quite a bit. So I is that, sent me uh, out and I ended up buying the new uh, Nikon, the, the Z28 to 400, which is quite a range. It's but am I reading uh, that right for the uh, ISO with the ISO 10,000? Uh, no, I don't think so. Was yeah, that, I, was, I, I looked at that and I was like, <laughs> well, is that getting the metadata correct? Is that really an ISO 10,000 shot? Wow, that's a pretty darn no. good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Richard, Weird. your 200 to 500 is living a very happy life in California. Good. <laughs> Probably loses it all the time. Yes, I'm glad. <laughs> all right, moving on. This one is Old Barn and Car. This one is uh, Lordesis, and the score is 23.8. Man. I don't know. That, that, that is one mile from my house. <laughs> when did you take that? That's in Georgia. Yeah. Couple weekends ago, right, Lourdes? Lourdes, you here? Yeah, they were up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's one mile from my house, <laughs> yeah, from where <laughs> I am right now. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, very dramatic uh, visual impact. The uh, you know, the those dramatic clouds that uh, that were kept. Uh, kept in play without overexposing them and, and getting the detail in it and all the drama in those dark clouds looks like a storm in the background and uh and the processing uh of this you know is uh it, it's very like i say a lot of visual impact when you uh when you look at this image Lots why, of visual. Oh, why only a 23 whatever let's remember this is general it's a 23.8 so that's almost a 24. Yeah. okay this is general, so it's that's a beautiful shot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very picture. high score too. It's a high okay. score. That's a high score for general. Okay. Any other comments? No. Us Spanish women have to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is uh, Mountain Sunset. This one's also mm -hmm. Lourdes's, and the score is twenty three point eight. I really like this one. Um, I just like the combination of the colors and the, 
I am uh, I'm always a sucker for layers and we've got layers of mountains, we got layers of colors, we got layers of clouds. Mm -hmm. So Yep, the 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 color palette is beautiful Yeah. in this. Mm -hmm. It yeah, it, it it looks like somebody would, you know, color palette somebody would mix with oil paints. Right. Mm. The the lighting on the trees in the front is very beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm worried for Lee. <laughs> Seriously, I'm worried for Lee. Seriously, because once once they over once they overpower you, I mean overtake you, man. They don't need you anymore. I'm I'm holding a little back. Your own. Don't worry. I'm holding a little back. <laughs> Just a little. Back. <laughs> Just a little, huh? All right, next one is reflecting. Uh, this one is Karen's, and the score is 23.1. The uh, the close eye is out of focus. The far eye is in focus, but the close eye is out of out of focus. That's that side of the. Uh, Face over there is is soft on the uh, on the to the uh, camera right there. It's soft. Can you? The other thing is it was Let me a see little. what happens. Also, Lynn, if you don't mind, if you if you turn on the crop tool and pull down to get the background highlights out of there. If you just pull the top down, not in, just pull the top down. Let me just, yeah, there, bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, there's still a little bit left, but I I don't think we needed that. that the background up there in the uh in the corner it brings you more right into the uh into the expression you don't have that distraction of the uh, of the stuff in the upper corners there and uh just uh it's just the the far eye is in focus and the close eye is not Yeah. I was concerned that he's kind of blue looking. So I wanted to give a, just a little bit of warmth. Yeah, I just. that happens and we've we've talked about that before where Yeah. the, you know the the blue color gets into the shadows and you and Yeah. you don't you don't realize it So he looks, he looks, he looks a little weird with the, when he's blue. yeah jim i remember you saying that and how did you say to fix that other than warming it up like karen like um Well, there's a, there's another way to do that besides doing the white balance like that. You can just go down into the color mixer panel and just desaturate the blue. all right you can do So, how do you do that you go all right, to here reset. you go Just you go just to uh yeah, saturation reset your reset reset your white balance, Lynn, okay and then do that. Just put set it and take your yeah, there you go. And then you can go down and uh yep. That's actually probably a little better. I mean, it, it needs, still needs, I think, a little warmth. Yeah. But then there's no blue in his, Yeah, in his I face. see it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I've got they do shots. have very red hair, so that's pretty. I do have shots like that, and I have the same blue issue. Yeah. Yeah, animals with black fur, black skin, all kinds of things in the in the shadows will 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 turn blue when you know in outdoors like that because the blue sky, the back the the back scatter of the blue light from the blue sky comes into the shadows and actually projects blue light into the shadows and colors things blue that aren't actually blue. Right, like like a uh, like a, a boatel grackle. You want you you that you would kind of want to you want to see some color because it's just a black bird, but for a orangutan, you don't want his face to be blue. So, yeah, Right. happens with happens with black birds, black bears. I can't tell you how many pictures of <laughs> Black blue bears bears are blue. I've I've seen people <laughs> post. yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> blue the bears, drugs. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're not in a Charmin commercial. yeah. Yeah. Jim, do you think softening uh, software, I mean, sharpening software would take care of that eye thing? It's possible it 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 yeah AI some AI processing Yeah, may software uh, yeah, they may may be able to do a little may bit of it. you know that looks like it's borderline as far Yeah. as whether that's you know really fixable or not Yeah, it's this way this eye is pretty soft. This one is borderline soft. mm -hmm. So next one is a frog and his sunflower. This is Diana Rouse, and the score is 23.5. Very nice. Well, I wish I had time to demonstrate.
straight it, but it's really not that hard of a fix to take that line out where the where there's a, that sudden transition of light to dark in the lower left side of the image oh, you're talking in right the background yeah. you see that yeah. see that see that hard edge line that that comes in there and that transition that's actually not that you know it's it's a photoshop fix not a lightroom fix but it's not that hard to do but that's that yeah that, that's a visual distraction in the background otherwise that's a you know yeah. like that image you could crop it down a little bit from the top but i think it's a little excess background in the top i didn't yeah. even notice that line Lynn, jim Yeah, the, the, yeah, it was a little overexposed. I mean, uh, there, this is shot with a uh, flash, so it was strobe, so it was a little hot on the top here, but... Yeah, well, they're, they're wet and shiny, so that's yeah. going to happen with a flash. Right. <laughs> and go from here. But uh, love the colors in that. Yeah. Love the texture. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, you need to, you, you're, you, you actually, they're supposed to, I think those next two are supposed to show in, in reverse order from what you have them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one we're supposed to see first. Okay. Okay. This one is uh, A10 Warthog and this is Jim Haggins and the score is 23.1. Which is pretty sharp for uh, something that's moving and it's kind of like shooting a bird, you know? So, and yeah. And it's, yeah. And it's about it's the size cool. of a big bird. Right? Yeah. It's not very big. <laughs> yep. Actually, this airplane had about an eight foot wingspan and uh, I was shocked at how big they are. These model airplanes. <laughs> if you look right at the center of that fuselage, you'll see that crack. And oh, you'll, yeah, see you the, can, you'll see you the can, result uh, of that. Uh, apparently this guy's had a hard landing before, but, uh, look at the I nose cone too. The nose you, too. You can see the repair yeah. on the nose cone too. <laughs> yep. I, I didn't know. I did not notice the crack until I, the next photo you see is the result of <laughs> having a crack when you land these things, but it was incredibly fast. This thing was doing like a hundred. Uh, there's a cracked wow. up one. That one is, uh, that one's called go. Oh, wait. How not to land an A-10 Warthog, and the score is 21.8 on that one. It's like... <laughs> you know what I think would have been great for this shot? I don't know if you, if you had the opportunity to do it or not. Would have been to be on the right-hand side of that plane and having the plane in the foreground and then looking across the wreckage to the uh, guy going, yeah. walking toward it. There, that, yeah. if, if you, if you had the availability to walk out there and do that, that, that would have been a very dynamic shot. Unfortunately, they only allow members on the, on the landing area. And <laughs> right. uh, this, mm -hmm. this is quite, a, this is quite a ways away, but, uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell the you know just a, yep. a story on this. <laughs> All right. Yep. And the 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 two the two then yes you know you you get the story. That's why I was telling Lynn. Yeah, show the other one first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the guy that's in the yellow shirt that's his airplane and uh, mm -hmm. remarkable pilot. I think it had a crack before it landed. It bounced once and then the other the other shot that I had was right before it landed. So uh, yeah, you see the result. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get on the on that field next time, show them your American Express card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They would take two American Express cards for what they want. I mean, I'm just saying, membership has its privileges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, guys. <laughs> All right, next one is go find your own tree. This one is mine. <laughs> this one is Jim McWilliams, of course, and it scores 23.2. <laughs> there's a lot of visual impact in, yeah. in this there's yeah. the 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 look of this the the detail the uh you know the, the overall you know kind of even lighting and and the colors and everything and yeah. you know this this is really this is really striking you you really get the uh and you really get the the attitude uh yeah. from, from that cat in this uh mm -hmm. in this picture but this you know, it has a, it almost has a, you know, it has a, it almost has a look like, you know, like, you know, like a piece of 
like a piece of cat art that would hang on a wall. Now it's got and, some weird stuff going on here, Jim. Do you, what is going on with the fur? Well, this is a cell phone well, shot. Okay. And it's one of thought. several of them. Okay. It's just happenstance that the animal was looking right at the camera. Yeah, it's perfect look. The mm. uh, the lady who Yeah, you almost it, ignore yeah. everything else because of the look of the cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I I gave this to the a, a copy of this to the lady that owns it, and she has entered it in the Humane Society's pet calendar contest. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So it you know it uh I don't think it's going to get on the calendar, but still you never you know. know. <laughs> you know, with animals, they're always looking somewhere where you don't want them to look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was definitely looking at you. <laughs> this one, this one, Jim, will make the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> it's got attitude yeah yep. he just and the color is just pops, yeah. you know yeah yep. he, he's a he's a very beautiful cat he really yeah. is yeah. Mm. all right moving on to the next one this one is uh citrus splash this is tories and the score is 23.4 yeah. tory here yeah yeah i'm here tory you yes. got to be selective when you and clean up the background. I know that mm -hmm. those are water droplets, those dark areas in the back, those things right. that you got to clean them up because they don't they don't look like they're, they're water drops anymore. They look like yeah. there's flatter dark areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. these. Yeah, all these here. Yes. Corey, yeah. could you have backed up some? I was God. very far away, actually, and I think those are shadows from yeah, the shadows, water yeah. drops yeah. to the background. I I kind of like feel like the bottom is missing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me let me just tell you. This was sitting on top of a upside down garbage can in the backyard okay. with a white background, and I'm very far away, and it's kind of like balancing on top of this uh, trash can <laughs> so <laughs> i couldn't quite get the bottom correct so yeah. but i yeah. thought the yeah. water splash i really love the the how it the shutter speed is very yeah. fast and it just kind of stops right. the water so and uh, i and and i'm gonna say what robert said earlier uh i i say what he says right. and uh the other question i have yeah the, those those gray spots you know, yeah. just, just need, need to be out of there so that all we see is just clean, you know, water, water splash. Yeah, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. the other question I have is, how many times did you do this? <laughs> Quite a few. Okay. <laughs> the, the question I have, and in something like this, if you lock the camera on a tripod, I don't know if you did that or not, and you yeah. can easily keep the shots in register, mm -hmm. I would have taken like this shot for the splash and... Okay. You know, if this were the if this were the best splash, but then found another shot where the piece of fruit was centered right. in the picture instead of up against the side and the yeah. handle, so that and you know and and you can even find you know this is and this is done in the real world professionally. Uh -huh. You shoot yep, this yep. again and again, composite, and you get the, the this best piece of splash, this best piece of splash, this right. the fruit right. in the middle. You get the where the you get where the water, you know, where the where the fruit is pulling the air and pushing the water down with it into the middle. And yeah. you can composite multiples together to really get that perfect visually impactful shot that shows, you know, everything just the way you want it to be. Right. But this is a you really, don't have really to. Good you don't have to get yeah. it all in one shot. Yeah, you can this is piece a really good it together. Okay. Yeah, this Helga, is Helga's good at this kind of stuff. <laughs> let, let, let me give you. I know we are running out of time, but I want to give you this one story. I, I started off in my career in advertising, and it's because of a shot like this that I ended my I, my career started to go down in advertising. I was <laughs> photographing for Coke, and you have to not only get the color right. But you have right. to do the splash like several hundred times. And I said, BS. <laughs> Forget it, huh? I got paid. I got paid eight thousand dollars. But it was to me that was too much of a headache. Yeah. <laughs> to get it just right. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. it is right. And the thing about it, yeah. they had they have a retoucher that comes in and actually puts it all together. 
<laughs> right. Still. <laughs> yeah, this was just a fun project yeah. for me to try. I don't yeah. have Photoshop, so I don't know how to layer one picture on top of another, but I just uh I just I love the water splash yeah. out of yeah. everything, whether it's water sports or if it's a fruit dropping in a in yeah. a glass or I just I love that splash of the water. It's just so refreshing you know it's fun to watch fun to look would, at yeah i would try the same thing again but put something white underneath your your um like a you know a piece of white board of some kind underneath yeah. the picture so and then right. really back up and use you know even a 200 millimeter lens and i you definitely need another person i'm sure you had somebody helping you with this i hope but yeah and that way you would get the splash that's you know the bottom of the of the whole bottom and then the more of the splash at the bottom because it's like confusing about where's this splash on the bottom coming from you know yes mm -hmm. yeah, one, one more thought about this you can okay. also do a time lapse yeah where you mm -hmm. stay at the water and you just let the camera continue that's to right. roll mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a possibility too. But yeah, great, great, a, a great attempt at this. And Hel Helga is our splash expert here. So if you get with Helga and she'll help you with splashing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next, all right, next one is uh, Pensive Leopard. This one is Diana Rouse and the score is 23.9. Yeah, this, this shot sucks. <laughs> I'll try better. I need to find. A I do. I do want there. you to go between that. Uh, I hate to say this, but between the tail and the and the thigh, darken this. Yes. Mm -hmm. It looks like you darkened the rest of it, and you forgot to darken this part. You're right. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. That's why I said the shot sucks. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I need a new photography teacher. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, oh, touche, touche. <laughs> just dark. I didn't even notice that. How horrible! Just darken it just a tad, and then use a little little warmth. And you could do the same thing up here. Oh my God! Shame on me. Yeah. That is careful. I'm sorry, Robert. I didn't do you right. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. <laughs> but other than that, I mean he's he he I don't know I would call him pensive. I think I'd call him tired. <laughs> I, I think he looks wistful. Yeah. I just I made it between pensive and wistful. Yeah, he's like, I don't know what he's looking at, but it's like something over here somewhere. <laughs> he's doing what every cat does for 18 hours a day yeah just kind of lays there lays it around yeah. <laughs> anything else three more guys three more uh, all right on to the next one this is uh I services like no longer needed this is jan's and the score is 23.6 help me now understand the title of this it's a decommissioned power plant. And I had the same question. Yeah. How do I how do I understand that from the picture I'm looking at? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but yeah, but yeah. going on from that, I'll say this is a this is great. The, the processing is gorgeous with the yeah. uh, with the tonal range yeah. and everything yeah. Thank you. on the on the composition. I I can't help but imagining what it would have been like had you rotated the camera to the left and included more of that stuff that's up in the upper left with this looking directly straight down this this corridor here it's it's leading lines converging lines it the, i follow the leading lines to nothing yeah. now but if you had rotated the camera and filled more of the frame with with that with all that part. big sheet metal stuff with all the rivets and stuff up there yeah. that has all that gorgeous tonal transitions in it mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm i'm imagining that in my head you mm -hmm. know as opposed to looking looking straight down this catwalk into yeah. a black space okay no i see what you're saying yeah i mean i i couldn't go to 
So you're saying I should have moved over toward the right. I'm just saying rotate the camera to, the to rotate, rotate the camera to the okay. left. Just to just fill left. more yeah. just fill more of the frame with that stuff and let let this line, you know, let this these leading lines, mm -hmm. you know, go they would go away to the right and you'd fill the frame with more of that stuff, you know, that's on the left. You know, we 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 still, you know, that's, you know, kind of the idea, but imagine yeah. rotating the camera as opposed yeah. to looking straight down that straight down that catwalk where those railings are all yeah. these converging leading lines that 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 don't yeah. lead you that don't lead you to anything yeah don't yeah. forget that just because it's a building doesn't have to it doesn't have to be straight it, you know, again, think about Lynn. think about beth think about beth uh beth and and um angie uh jan everything yeah. they these inside they go buildings they're turning the camera constantly oh i see what you're saying uh, okay yeah. i get you okay yeah. yeah i yeah i i i i shoot interiors all week long and 95 percent of my shots are on diagonals yeah okay all right I mean, can you, you can imagine what this kind of look would look like if you chopped that piece off and turned it on its side you know okay. yeah. yeah yeah no I hear what you're saying. Yeah, okay, good. Go more for the abstract rather than the realistic. Okay. The realistic is kind of the, I mean, the, the, the processing is awesome, but it's just kind of like, what am I supposed to be looking at here? Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks. This one is end of the line. This is also uh -huh. Jan's and it's 23.2. This has some really like strong, like that. some really strong visual impact really with the processing. Like yeah. Looks like uh, looks like you know kind of black and white HDR, you know, like it was an HDR turned into black and white, which looks which looks cool. The 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 compositional issue I have with this is on the right hand side chopping through that window. If we had seen a little bit more of the window, or Lynn, if you can just take it in and just pass the window only on that side, yeah, yeah, oh, chopping really? through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There you go. Now it just yeah. takes you right down here. You've oh, you've got okay. that. You've got that bright window right on the edge of the frame over there. That did you know that that you know it. I keep looking at that. Yeah. Whereas it's you really so want me to be looking down the you know down the link. You want me to mm -hmm. be looking down the length of the bus, and yeah, now right. I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I never even considered that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I me mean, because especially because this part is pretty bright. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me. You know, down here, it's taking you this way, but this kind of makes because of this mm -hmm. thick thing here, it stops you. So yeah. You don't, I, if you get rid of that, then it just mm -hmm. you go right straight mm -hmm. down here. And okay, which, yeah. And again, I'll say you know I I shoot interiors all week long, and and that's something you don't do. You don't cut you you don't cut through a window on an edge of a frame. Yeah. Okay. It's, if if you can avoid it at all, you don't you, you just don't do it. If you can avoid doing that at all, is you you don't want half a window on the edge of a frame. Okay, gotcha. Okay, Thanks. last one. Last one is NAS Lighthouse. This one is Marks, and the score is twenty two point one. Mm -mm. Tell me about the treatment of this, Mark. And you can't see it with my background, but there is a black frame around here. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but I'm I'm just wondering why the treatment of the the light the, flare on the edges, the white the white vignetting. Yeah, yeah. it's just uh, I mm -hmm. was testing something, and I for some reason I like this one with that. I tried doing it with a darker or doing it without, and for some reason this is what you know. I, I've re-edited this photo several times tried different things tried to change the centering of the lighthouse try and i always come back to this is the one that i like and i don't know why well, based on that i'm going to make a suggestion lynn you can probably uh find it and, and do it quickly enough in lightroom with 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 those uh with the white vignette you that's kind of a more appropriate in like a sepia toning treatment you want right. can you hit a can you hit a sepia filter for me your preset uh did you have a over in your presets is there a sepia profiles over yeah. in, on, on the develop side you can pull up those profiles i think they're yeah. on the other side that's true yeah and there's right those four squares right there just a, just a, right 
You were I'm losing my, I'm, I'm tired, guys. Okay. It's been a long day. Go I woke up at 10 o'clock this morning. I'm, not, I'm tired. Down to the vintage. I think it'll show. Maybe has something like, yep. almost like sepia. There you go. Yep. yep. There. Look down on the look. Yeah. See, now now I feel that uh, that white vignetting looks more appropriate with, right. it makes with it the like treatment like this. Yeah. Old film that's got leakage on the side. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 the white vignette was, you know, was often done back in the day, but it was yeah. often done with the warm, you know, with the warm tone. They went together. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, it, it, there was, yeah, there's a picture of my uh, great grandparents and <laughs> with them centered, and they had like the white vignetting right. around it yeah, and like, stuff. And it was sepia. <laughs> yeah. And, and Robert, stuff. give him the speech. Which which uh, which one? The one about I don't ever want to see it like that again. No, the frame. Framing. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the border. Frame. The yeah, border. Don't, don't yeah. give don't give me a border. Uh, I don't need one. To offset the image, I want the image to stand on its own. Yes, the yeah. For what we do here, we we want the image to stand, as Robert says, to stand on its own for for what it is without the without you know borders and framing embellishments. Yeah, everybody goes through that, Mark. Don't worry. We well, all, this one all this one was actually <laughs> this one's actually uh, framed and in my office along with about. Uh, <laughs> nine others and so the the black uh, borders was to make it fit the oh, okay. the uh, 16 by 20 frame <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and oh, yeah, i couldn't yeah. find the i couldn't find the shot with it without the border in it oh so. you just do this <laughs> you there say bye bye right border yeah. <laughs> yeah so next time next time i'll take the border out of it. yeah yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah. It was, that's one thing. And that, what is, we our club accepts a lot of stuff. We're very into the art side of things, but the uh, a border or a frame around the image is one of those things yeah, we, we do not like to see. Yeah, we want okay. we want to judge the we want to judge the image, you know, right. it, itself, and you know, and not and not take into consideration, you know, like framing embellishments. Yeah, yeah. So I'll kill, okay. but it, Good, good, good. Start with uh, you. You, you ask Gian, Gian, ask Gian about titles. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been through that one too. Titles are important as well. So think about your title. So, yeah, I'm not good with that. You yeah. know, it's just like well, we, okay, it's all, it's the lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, we all start off bad with titles, and we all start off with really bad titles, and then mm -hmm. eventually we get like Jim McWilliam, and we know what kind of titles to use. So. <laughs> The only one of my pictures that has a good title is I've got one. It's a black and white of uh, the clock tower at uh, Pensacola Junior College. And it looks, I've always called it the, for, the foreboding clock because it, it just has a, because <laughs> it was at night and it's black and white and it's just the, the lighting on it. So maybe y'all get to see that one one day. Yeah. <laughs> good. All right, guys. Awesome. Hey, Lynn, before we go. Yeah. Before we go, could you go back to uh, Jim McWilliams, uh, cat picture there's a there's a title for what's happening there is probably by accident and uh jim you might know but okay if if people will look at that and then move way over to one side or even get up and, and walk away and then go back to the other way the cat's eyes will follow you yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, there's a there's a term for that they 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 used to do portraits to do that on purpose. And we were talking about it at lunch today. Here I was. I think it's where his eye shine is. That kind of makes it look like a live eyes. And so that's, anyway, you know, anytime they're going to look live, they're going to look like they're following you. Those pictures used to scare me to death when I was a little kid. We'd go into an old <laughs> house and be a big photo or, or something of somebody hanging on the wall that didn't get taken away. And no matter where you walked in the room, his eyes would follow you. <laughs> but you have to that's called Hogwarts just right and that, <laughs> that one is placed just right to do that yeah yeah you know what the name of it is Jim yeah it's called a ghost <laughs> ghost <laughs> are creepy the Hogwarts I don't know those Hogwarts uh, movies that eyes followed you the pictures there you go to Disney to go to Universal the pictures all follow you <laughs> all right okay. guys all right.